Okay. Squid. Yep. All right. We and for are. Yeah, like I said, we understand. Okay, we're good. We're live. Yes. Okay. Ah, all right. All right, everyone. Welcome to possibly one of the first uh, interesting um, enough demo debates that are hosted. It's going to be hosted. It's being hosted right now by Debate Boutique. We are testing out and figuring out how all this uh, online debate is looking like, feeling like. And so if you were confused while you saw a lot of pandemonium and question mark faces just a second ago, that was that. That was me being supremely confused. But I think that I'm at a 50% retention uh, right now. So I think that we're doing well. With that being said, welcome, welcome, welcome. This will be a framework demo debate, a pro demo debate. And on the affirmative, we have Jacob Smith and Darius White. You will see Jacob with the, gra with the grass. Darius, unfortunately, will not have a visual just because, you know, uh, connectivity is hard out here. Um, and so we're happy to get clear and perceptive audio uh, because that will be helpful for this debate. They'll be reading a counter gazing um, affirmative um, in its relationship to surveillance apparatuses within the criminal you know, justice system and how that as a strategy is able to be adaptive or useful um, in kind of its abolitional politic for um, the, their advocacy. On the negative, we have Caitlin Walrath and Ollie. Now your last name really gets me. Uh, can you pronounce it so the people will hear the correct pronunciation? Yeah, my last name is Tafiedin. Tafiedin, there yeah. we go. Uh, um, and they'll be representing the negative, um, holding the line, reading framework. You know the argument that's dear and near to a lot of y'all's hearts. And so that's going down as well as some um, uh, other off-case positions and um, case debate, because case debate is an important debate. And so that'll be going down here. How this will all work, um, this is more specific to the students who are part, uh, who have registered to be part of the actual rooms that'll be occupied, is that there will be um, breakout rooms. There is an AF prep breakout, breakout room and a NEG prep breakout room. The respective teams, when well, they're not in this main room here debating where everyone else is seeing them, uh, the students will go in and out of the prep rooms hearing the strategy making, hearing the kind of what to do with cross-sex situations as they emerge. Sorry, Lisa, no, I don't think that we have enough of uh, time to do an email chain, but I think that we can send the email chains afterwards. That was just not something that I thought of until right now. Uh, oops, but you know, I, I th this will be um, educational. Um, in terms of parameters, I'm cool with doing college times. I'm not gonna have the folks who are so used to not college times, uh, you know, try to fit into high school because yo, it's hard out here. So, with that being said, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are going to get started and. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. On that, the 1AC from the affirmative, unless there are any questions for me. No? All right, let's do it. Wait, wait, is there any way possible to attach the 1AC into the chat? I think, I mean. If that was the case, then I think that then we'll be able to just, I think that there's a way that we can sort of attach things, but if not, if not all possible, we'll be able to, yeah, as you said before. But I I'll just see, think. I don't see that capability or to attach a file. All right, cool. I'll just make an I'll just ask him to make sure. Oh wait. Oh Jacob Jacob can also share his screen, which if he has access to that'd be pretty cool. That is also true. Yeah let me do that. So cool. get started with the uh you've disabled screen sharing. Oh did I uh, settings one second now you can do it. All right. <laughs> also really quick did you say we're using college times yes okay, sweet. 
did that uh, screen get shared? Yep. Jacob, can you be right side up though, please? Uh, to be honest, I don't know how to change it back right now. Let me I see if I can. No, no, if it's if it's too much technology, we're gonna have to look at you this way. It's fine. Okay. Whole new perspective. All righty, let's do it. All right. Let me get a timer up. All right. Is everyone good? The technological architecture that engulfs us precodes us and predicts human behavior so as to create a negative feedback loop of social containment that Ruha Benjamin calls the carceral continuum. Corporations no longer undergo technological revolutions akin to industrial revolution, but instead seek seemingly modest, ever so frequent updates based on, among other things, user interface in order to refine algorithmic efficiency. This is what distinguished past epochs and modernization from the current era of design. The rapid convergence of technological systems and carcerality make the present a crucial moment for the refinement of abolitionist tactics. Modern design logics ensure that no space is totally neutral. This is Ruha Benjamin in 2019. Tools capture more than bodies. They capture imagination. Electronic tracking location systems are part of techno corrections. We need social security to justify techno corrections, management, control, correction, and poor racialized people. Pride the race on disarmed, discriminatory, design a carceral continuum that skills over prison walls. The prison industrial complex is vaster than most of us realize. Carcerality extends into everyday lives. Technology is not just a bystander, it aids and alerts the process by which carcerality penetrates social life. Technologies reinforce discrimination, especially when we presume they are insulated from human influence. This combination of Coded bias, imagine of activities, the new gym code and innovation that enables social containment, transformation, abolitionist projects must take an end to carcerality in all forms. Such an approach rests upon the expansive understanding the carceral that attends to the institutional imaginative underpinnings of oppressive systems of polishing the carceral continuum requires an investment in the continuum of alternatives. To what end do we imagine a more expansive conceptual tool that is necessary? One that bridges STS and critical race studies, anti black racism, a condition for the fabrication of anti black imaginations, put to work co productions, analysis, calls for how the technological and social components of design are intertwined, they might be configured differently to extract the cars imagine from our institutions for our own thinking and many of our starting assumptions design is conceptual lens so as to investigate how social biases get coded not only in laws and policies but in different objects and tools that we use radio radio imagination serves a methodological touchstone for ethical tech science where the zeal making new things is tempered by an ability to listen to the sounds and stories that people already made at stake is the human itself who defines it who gets us from any black feminist approach to post-humanism is not about including the oppressor in the field of hopeful humanism, but abolishing one particular genre that dominates and devours all other explaining the imagination includes keepers keepers squatting in the nooks of the crannies thinking forcing you down certain pathways and telling you to avoid other limits have been placed on the very possibility of emotional alternatives. These ideological limits have been contested to think in different ways. Carceral imagination limits not only beings and bodies, but also the many fixes proposed. Imagination is no longer mere fantasy, no longer escape, no longer leap pastime, nor the contemplation, the imagination, organized uh, field of social practice, a form of work, a form of recognition. The imagination is all forms of agency, a social fact, the key component, the new global order. The task is to challenge discriminatory design from our inner and outer lives, but to work the others to imagine alternatives to the techno quo as part of a larger structure to materially collect uh, materialize collective freedoms and flourishing and liberatory imagination. Not only opens up possibilities and pathways, creates new templates, and builds upon a radical black radical tradition that develops insight and strategy, grounded in justice. And the semiotic process of bulk incidental collection within the criminal justice system necessitates an algorithmic model which presumes white cis males as the standard of innocent and innocence and patriotism. This produces disembodied, racialized, sexualized, and gender tropes of black women that mandates the reduction of black life to raw data for Americans' risk calculus. This is Shepard in 2016. Big data are the latest trend in the long tradition of modernity, fetishization, and taxonomy in the service of the institutional order. It's important not to lose sight of the historical continuities. Data surveillance assemblage is embedded where gender, race, sexuality are concerned. Racialized ordering is fluid and contextual, upholds negating strategies that accompanied European colonial expansion and transatlantic slavery. The exploitative monitoring of black women by law enforcement commentators, online communities continue to extend pervasively to contemporary digital space simultaneously, obscuring the forms of discrimination. They advance in the nature of allegedly general interests. The algorithmic models of data valence relies upon are measured against white male cisgendered heterosexual predictive models that by surveillance data reproduce past patterns they cannot take into effect effective consideration randomness a feminist attention to data practices as well as those left behind you and lack of access is timely and warranted and the 1ac is a refusal a misdirection refutation of the white gaze in the politics of visibility that the anglo and west continues to rely upon it's necessary we devise a new politics of looking and being looked at for and by blackness the deep in the muck of surveillance in the experience of the of black folks we find the praxis necessary to recognize that we are the constantly the voyeur subject, the surveilled and the surveyor. In this act of recognition, is a call for the rejection of U.S. surveillance as a tool of the colonial gaze alongside an attempt to reposition and reclaim the right to look both as itself and the colonial other through this multiplicity that we not only present the self, but insert the self into existence. Brown in 2015. 
The black factor blackness is signal to the strangeness of black light. The sociogeny is what needs bound within the category of the human that fixes and frames blackness as an object of surveillance. Epidermalization is the imposition of race onto the body. There is no ontological resistance, facial shaped and formed by whiteness. Dark matter takes up blackness as metaphor and living neutrality and applies it to understanding and surveillance or work across multiple spaces, the airport, the station, different segments of times through the multiplicities of blackness. This method of analyzing surveillance and the conditions of racial blackness brings forms of cultural production into dialogue with critical race scholarship, sociological theory, and feminist theorizing with certain acts of cultural production we can find performances of freedom for sure then it's cultural identity that does not black experiences static or singular but instead is a series of transformations my use of the term blackness is to signal blackness is a sign one that carries particular histories of resistance and domination that is always under contestation blackness is identity cultural history and present signifier and signified but never fixed within the field of surveillance studies race remains under theorized and the role of the transatlantic slave trade in particular rather than seeing surveillance as something inaugurated by new technologies but see it is ongoing to insist that anti-blackness undergirds and sustains the interstates intersecting surveillances of our present order by inter Intersecting surveillances. I'm referring to the ways in which practices, performance, policies regarding surveillance operate. Invisible is somehow still there. Dark matter is theoretical. It's the term dark matter is the way to think about race, the substances, structures of modernity. We look for moments of refusal and critique. They reveal the social life of the slave nation, perhaps speak of freedom practicing, perhaps the details working to power in making what is exceptional to slave life and every uh, every day through acts of violence. And the affirmative moment of counter-gazing affirms a paradoxical moment of radical affirmation of sociality while lodging a paradigmatic negation towards the carceral system itself. Only an imminent gesture against carcerality is a linguistic, political, and ontological structure can open the, up the potential for abolitionist practice. This is Dilson 2019. The imperative of abolition is to dismantle, build, and transform within existing systems of oppression. The abolitionist imperative recognizes how those conditions have been given their reality, their materiality, and their force. Abolition itself, the work of radical negation, the immoderate and even fanatical saying no problems are already present in digestible, understandable terms, things which we are already familiar with and which trouble us because they disrupt the normal flow of practices and events to take problems as stated is to approach problems from the domain of policy expertise, which typically forecloses critical analysis. The tracing of the breakdown is a way of discovering how a problem has come to appear as one, a genealogy of becoming a problem. This connection is involved as unfinished or unfulfilled project abolishing chattel slavery. The greatest promise of abolitionism was comprehensive transformation of civilization, which the sanctity of white civil society was defined as the capacity to define community and safety through the effectiveness of its ability to rage radical genocide that the project of positive abolition was short-lived. The present is a location of ongoing crisis of persistent racial and gender subordination, abolition, democracy as a framework for understanding the prison, not merely as a place, but a way of thinking about broader cursory practices of torture, confinement, racialized, and gender subjugation. Prisons have thrived over the last century precisely because the absence of those resources and the persistence of some deep structures of slavery and the praxis of the affirmative to not, is not only necessary to deconstruct the material structures of the world, but also build a new a culture of political and social accountability. This is Dylan Rodriguez in 2019. How does abolition generate a radical critique of carceral power of incarceration as a logic of state and social formations? What are the limitations of liberal tuberculosis of demands for reform, dysfunctional and scandalous systems of legitimated state violence? Abolition is a dream towards futurity vested in search and counter civilization. History is a genealogy, a collective genius that performs liberation under the conditions of duress, security and freedom require a decisive departure from the radical demands for policy reform, form equality, amped up electoral participation. Rather, what is needed is a mustering of collective voice that abrogates the political discursive limits of the demand itself. Abolition Abolition is not a merely a process of negation, but also radically imaginative, generative, and socially productive communal practices. Abolition seeks a radical reconfiguration of justice, subjectivity, social formation that does not depend upon the existence of either the carceral state or carceral power. Contemporary reformist approaches to addressing the apparent overreach and scandalous excess of the carceral state characterized by calls to end police brutality and mass incarceration fail to recognize the very logics of the overlapping criminal justice and policing regimes systematically perpetuate racial, sexual, gender, and colonial class violence through carceral power and abolitionist historical mandate provides a useful necessary departure from the liberal assumptions that either the carceral state or the carceral power is an inevitable and permanent feature of the social formation. Abolition is creative, imaginative, speculative, collective labor. Consider abolition as a long accumulation of future planning acts performed in the name of peoples and communities relentlessly laboring for their own physiological and cultural integrity. As such, abolition is and was a practice in analytical methods, a present tense visioning, a creative project, a performance, a counter where pulsing produced in the Persistent insurgency as human beings that underlies undermine the totalizing logics of empire, chattel, occupation, heteropatriarchy, racial, colonial, genocide, and civilization as a juridical narrative epoch. Consider abolition then as a counter civilization distinction of freedom that defies the modern disciplinary. You can mark it there. Cool. Just give me a second to pull up a timer. All right. Are you going to start? Yeah, I'm good whenever. Perfect. Uh, so 
I want to start, uh, what is the purpose of the 1AC? So, like, what is the goal of countergazing? So, what is the purpose of the 1AC, or is what is the purpose of the advocacy statement? I if think... kind of two separate questions. Okay, if they're two separate questions, I have to answer them each separately, I guess. Uh, so, the purpose of the advocacy statement is an argument about the nature of surveillance and how people respond to surveillance in terms of internal versus external validations. Our first three cards indicate that the system of carceral power, or what Ruha Benjamin describes the carceral continuum, is that carcerality influences everyday life across racial divisions such that carcerality becomes internalized in particularly racialized ways towards the pursuit of certain ideals, i.e. white masculinity as the Uh, kind of identification. The advocacy statement of countergazing uh, says you should a refuse to internalize carcerality as an inevitable structure, but also something that determines, you know, our relationship to each other, to etc. Right, mm-hmm. and both the last three cards indicate that would mobilize a theory of abolition towards an understanding of carcerality as inherently tied to an anti-black history of chattel slavery. Sure, and then the purpose of the one AC. Uh, purpose of the 1AC in the context of debate, uh, partially for, you know, this context of the demo debate is, you know, uh, for students to learn about abolitionist praxis, etc. Cool. Uh, so I want to talk about the advocacy. Uh, what does it mean to effectively mobilize this refusal? So like, how does one gauge whether countergazing is effective in its practice? So I don't think that really makes sense because our argument is not there is a single moment of countergazing where Darius or any other individual, you know, reclaims the right to look. But the affective part of it is really a claim about when you make that moment of the radical no or the refusal of surveillance apparatus is, is after that, what world and what politics do you craft around? Rodriguez makes the claim by which you should understand that is whether or not the 1AC moves that energy in towards abolitionist politics versus reformist politics. So you all are not concerned with after those politics are kind of thought of what is done with them, with what is done with them. Well, if, if I could answer, I think that what Jacob just sort of classified, I think it's the opposite. I think that we are concerned about the sort of reconstruction of how sort of power relation functions, i.e. the Dylan Rodriguez piece of evidence, as it makes a claim that deconstruction is also constitutionally tied to reconstruction as it requires a reorientation or an abolitionist practice away from the current status quo so we can begin to reimagine a new world or alternative forms of living, i.e. that those things are mutually exclusive and exist in antagonist. Perfect. And uh, that's time, at least on my end. Right, cool. Sounds yeah. good. Oh, yes. Sorry, Jasmine. I will turn it on in the future for cross All right. Is everyone ready for the one and C, or at least in order. I'm gonna assume yes. Okay. Um, the order is two off, and then case. All right. Is everyone ready? Um, downloaded it one more time, real quick. I just got. I just looked at the updated version. I apologize. Okay. Right, sweet. Oh, and I should share my screen, right? Um, yeah, that would actually be perfect. Uh, and uh, one thing I just want to also say is that uh, whenever I do mine, Jacob, if you could possibly share some of the two AC cards uh, whenever I pull it up, that would be perfect too. All right, cool. And I also have this up also as well, just to sort of notify everyone. So that as the two A, I'm good. I don't know if anyone else is, but yeah, I just wanted to let y'all know. I'm good too. All right. Um, let I me have try no to... idea what the question you asked was, Darius, but. I said, Jacob, whenever you possibly can, I'll send out the two AC cards. I was wondering if you could also screen share it because from my computer, right? Uh, my, the Wi Fi just isn't as great. So I was just wondering if you could screen share it from your computer the cards. We'll talk yeah, about it during the prep room. All right. We can go to the app prep room or whenever after during prep. But yeah. Cool. But yeah, I'm good to go. All right. Is the screen sharing? Yeah, it's working. All right, cool. 
Interpretation. An act means to make law by authoritative act. Black Clause Dictionary 9. An act to make the law by authoritative act. Reform means to make government more effective or equitable at meeting existing goals. Patashki and 11. Reform is a deliberate change in an existing line of policy to impart rationality and governmental activity to make governmental uh, government more effective. Intended goals are reforming an area where government is involved. Federal government is in D.C. and Carter Online and 5. The federal government is in D.C. The text of the resolution calls for debate on hypothetical governmental action. We see action of the F has to be the USFG. Erickson and 3. Each topic contains certain key elements. An agent doing the acting in the United States the verb should or just action to put policy into action through a governmental means. Our impact is debatability. There are two internal links. First is limits. A bounded topic serves as a predictable status point for debates that guarantees thematic coherence. Absent defined limits, debates competitive incentives create a race to the margins that distorts topic research. Second is ground. A predefined controversy ensures a vibrant lit based and in in-depth clash, but it's unreasonable to prepare for alternative frameworks which, with the ground allocated to us by the parameters of resolution. All two AC defense of this claim will rely on concessionary ground, which isn't a stable basis for a year debate. New apps or a voting issue undermines negative preparation, prevents in-depth discussion over the merits of the app. Debate's not about finding the perfect resolution. It's about learning from the failure of our imperfect ones. The belief that any one debate can translate to material outcomes is naive at best and complicit in the systems they critique at worst. Topical advocacy encourages an ethos of humility and interconnectedness, which can engender ontological shifts in society and confront the crisis of modernity, but that requires a willingness to be wrong. It's entry out in 18. Humility is about understanding limits of knowledge, not only of our own knowledge, limits of knowing itself and making sense of the, of the world. If we are going to engage with the world in change making, it would be important to understand the contradictions and paradoxes without trying to project the delusions over the world itself. When a system is in decline, people want to walk out. We can create a different system for the hot ashes of the system that hasn't yet cooled down. A meal surely people want results straight away. This is your replacement of securities. Our promise, and now these are perceived as broken. What we what if we understand that the promise of the systemic is unrealistic? What we need is experimentation. We need to start from a place of not knowing because otherwise it's not as an experiment. It's your if you're trying to engineer something. If it's an experiment, you are designing something that you know is going to fail and learning from this. Learning can take place to a failure becomes a fertilizer for something that happens when these ash are cool. What is important is not to see as failure as failure. If I keep doing the same experiment with the same results, it becomes a waste of energy. I'm not learning anything that in order to fear it to be rewarding and fun, even if it needs to be learning from failure, it needs to make mistakes. Debating policy forecasts in a competitive tournament format anchored by fear adjudication encourages epistemic humility and cognitive flexibility that spills outside debate. It's unique because broad gender forecasting is encouraging media and dogmatism now. It's Miller's in 18. Studies found tendencies to express opinions that economists face fascist nuance judgment are a rare range of disappears when you can't think yours too. Quick suggestion conclusions to associate with either views to attempt to apply. Can I believe these reviewable claims or must I believe this is distinct claims? I'm prone to overconfidence and too fond of seeking a like minded others. We're embracing increasing the extreme for you susceptible to justifying cycles of reasoning that makes it contemptuous for the other side. Under well defined conditions, people can shape and treat as less as dogmas in a more accessible kind of propositions. That's kind of asking people to exit complex policies makes people appreciate the ignorance, which causes them to a lot of reasons. Essential that they request over how police uh, policies work out why one of the supports for proposes merely invokes a few feelings but not account of sufficient rationale. Directing uh, people to consider the opposition allows to entertain divergence in areas. These to ensure that participants that I know that you're accountable before the voicing their opinions and cannot consider opinions of those to whom they are best to answer. But additional accountability to all the knowable answers that blocks off a simpler coding strategy says that attitude shifting and defensive holstering and commitments is a boosting complexity of reasoning. People engage in perhaps as health criticism. They can see literature receive a wider range of view and understand people can see it differently. Turn with participants into a world in which they play as accountable to your accuracy, not a views that plea for like minded, wishful ideological shifting you thinking will translate into worse performance. Certainly, pressure people to acknowledge opposing views as well as gaps in their knowledge, which reduce the confidence in moderately effective performance. If one's goal is to do well in a term, engage in perspective thinking and defining uh, property of open-minded thinking and a pure coalition of uh, top performance. Participants must cope with the uh, culture shock of moving from the hurly-burly political world in which a uh, polemics pol pol dominate to the uh, pure percent accountability of world's tournaments. Tournaments incentivize one thing, getting the best scores by putting higher probabilities on things that happen and lower on things that do not well, avoiding too hastily, declaring outcomes certain or impossible. Tournaments moderate attitudes and more flexible styles of thinking, encouraging guys to tournaments builds over the into how people make judgments on topics this year, linkage to uh, beliefs in tournaments. The, it is hard to figure out whether, whether judgments are well calibrated when it's unsure of what happened. Tournaments pressure to recognize the list for knowledge and folks of the world as it is now as we wish it to be. That was more sensitive and granular. A mode of thinking about culture tournaments can spill over its entire related judgments outside the tournament. The critique, assuming this, the act of countergazing is political or act of survival in and of itself, obfuscates the way that individualizing function of community of capitalism renders pol political victories resilient. It conflates second order differentiation in theory with structural transformation. Only forwarding and debating concrete visions of political change can mobilize collective movements. Alvarez in 17. We've allowed leftism to become a, lo a loose culture of positions, a sense of self-satisfaction as opposed to con concrete political actions. Community for capitalism sucks away the potential differential ideological causes never let you to forget how glory into the are our limits to introducing a working left agenda to multiple publics providing a public forum for key arguments mobilizing resistance if we are collectively organs of political body what is it or our function our function is to critique the implied goal of raising public awareness is enough leading venues for political differentiation themselves to rhetorical stride and courage to support and chirping arguments from all over itself has become a marketplace they're not bodies just thousand points for a light trying to rationalize each other the community of capitalism and your in our jungle massive social media has created a trap to successfully engineer our desire for an ideal free and molded from these pre-existing models
models of self care appears in Ellis Marx's Marxist style. A candy score, human capitalism gets us to buy and to become dependent and even to celebrate wiping a resistance off the map. The real technology shifts to a, a digital university, provisional for victory results, listen to false sense that things are, are going smoothly. We can keep in charge of traffic, but to a, a base and mobilized leader just an excuse always. And if our actions we know, do we know what won't, won't come? Must now be called for forth into viable forms that can be a fault in support. Acknowledging, the, the, acknowledging these obstacles won't make them go away. Less features. It must be concluded mobilization, strategizing the on ground collaborations. We better critiques than any of this. The prison industrial a complex of ice race. How do we act to the refuse more whole anti campaigns and embroils, and embroils them in a drastic political landscape unfolding right now? Campaigns for policy changes created of local grassroots efforts by a black activists. The case. Their strategy peters out at best and gets co-opted at worst. It trades off with their capacity to use their to generate utopian imaginaries and concrete alternatives and mobilize systemic change outside the university. That's Web and 18. It is easy to be seduced by the undercommons and finding it is difficult to begin within and against universities is impossible to sustain. A romantic condition of refusing excellence will cost you your job. How does one live in networks are short lived? The and meetings with structure order offer time. I don't understand so works. So she's highly problematic. The final tool question of what's taking how to identify utopian fighter. And I can never adequately address study and built in our we are slippy at constant speed and concrete material reference. We need more than poetry. We do not resist any new world into being the university cannot be decided for the rate of utopian politics cannot even be the starting point for this within university movements will soon be uh, co-opted and neutralized. The institutional habits uh, weigh so heavily that projects will be discarded from the outside, colonizing the imaginary of education in universities. But uh, one space of learning, creating radical experiments, spaces need to shift toward operating outside of it. The movements structured as laboratories for alternative relationships beyond the academies and ethical and political responsibilities provide theoretical analysis to help forge utopian imaginary means putting what's knowledge and resources to use in the surface collaborative process. The uh, general utopian vision that can help inform, guide, and mobilize long-term collective actions for systemic change. Affect isn't a basis for politics. They provide no recourse for dealing with atrocities. It's in 15, affect for the theory humbles irrationalist pretensions by warning minds to the process of thinking is an afterthought that we can never lightly account for what we've actually been affected by things and others in the world. In mysterious writing, affect operates as a cipher, cannot formulate a coherent basis for a political judgment. The intersectional of spontaneously emerging regular process remains a, a trap in a double mind. No critical judgment is forthcoming so long as the intens intensity may be amplified. Cannot correctly critique or oppressive political structures such as futures and Nazism with the masses of race such regime for the intensity. The very notion of subjective reflectivity or fiction, a body is always conditioned no matter what could happen. Human freedom meet under such conditions. Human freedom is the capacity to of friction and a basis of existing for affirming a preferred set of proper structures without collective coherent structures, the legal, political, and cultural conditions necessary for meaningful freedom, including political judgment, are likely to change. Each purpose of the action based on intensity and the absence of political structures, this is destined to pass with the next tide. The theories for monetization, fluid materiality, external networks, only freedom and responsibility of justice could be resolved by so simply as expedient. Biological programming depends on external stimuli. Uncertainty is a the question of how communication occurs around the different, difficult, the different levels of the mind and body complex. If affect theories insist meaning feelings have nothing to do with the affect, it is preserved first the a purity effect of intensity. We know it's there. We just can't say anything about it. Theorists like assume we want to eat their cake and have it too. It is incumbent to account for how, how exactly manipulation is being carried out. The engineering of affects first from the fundamental lack of exploratory power. Anti blackness isn't historically calcified, and the reading runs counter to the black radical tradition. That's Kelly in 17. I don't recognize black politics has been structured by white supremacy. What people do in terms of social formation, community building, may be structured in dominance, but not defined by it. Ontological totality structures by dispossession. Traditional part of the black radical tradition is a refusal to even admit human beings could be property. Slavery, Jim Crow, and mass incarceration are actually distinct historically specific responses to the weakness of the racial regime. Jim Crow was a response to the black democratic upsurge. There's a huge gap between 1877 and reconstruction and the rise of Jim Crow in 1890s. Mass incarceration upward swings to do with the responses circles in the 1960s. We end up thinking that white supremacy is so powerful we can't do anything when it's the opposite. White supremacy is fragile. The system has given to us the impression that it's so powerful it's working overtime to respond to our opposition. Black feminist jurisprudence jams down the dominant ideologies to reduce Opposition to structures of power, but that scholarship has to be accessible from a legal perspective. Austin in 89. Missing humanism and simplistic assertions of discursive practices are not adequate. The chief sources of a, our theory should be black women's critiques of society that's dominated by instructive favor white men of wealth and power. Just should apply the criticism and the lend a clear visibility to the, the positive transformation cultural priorities. Or just we should ensure the transmission is dominated by a the message that reduce our indignation, limit our activism, destruct our energies, and otherwise make us a producer of our own subordination. A black feminist your students should appreciate justice that the a direct constitutional grassroots opposition of black women undertakes this fight in order to and structural constraints. All the critiques are Useful, it can be an application of the responsibility to shape an affirmative agenda that makes the lives of real black women the center focus. Our scholarship must be accessible to an audience of black females, law, school, law students, legal scholars, protectioners, and non legal activists. It is imperative that our writing and knowledge and potentially reflects that we are not the voices of a monolithic racial structural community that does not know class divisions on social and cultural diversity. Uh, could you send that last card? Uh, yeah, it was in the here, yeah, it was in the yeah. first email, Darius. Oh, it was in the first email? Cool, 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 yeah. cool, cool. And know, before right. um, Crossing starts, just making sure for the students who are in the Zoom call for the Q&A after, making sure that you are not only flowing the speeches, but you are also listening and flowing Crossex for any questions that are being cleared up now. All righty. That's all I have. You good for Crossex? Yeah, I yeah. am. 
Uh, so let's talk about your Kelly evidence on case first. What aspect of the 1AC is a particularly calcified reading of anti-blackness when we've made a claim towards positive movements towards abolition? Yeah, so I think the DILT evidence and the Brown evidence are both drawing on Fanon's conceptualizations of ontology and the way that that relates to the white gaze, politics of visibility, a lot of stuff that you talked about. This evidence says that that is not true, that those systems aren't reiterations of themselves, but rather they are distinct, historically specific uh, systems that result from specific, Wait, you know, so, the context of what they arise in. Yeah, so what's the difference between that? So our statement said that there has been a constant historical trend modulated by the system of carcerality and prisons and policing from slavery to now. What okay. is different between what you've said and we've said? The difference is that we don't think that it is a result of the technologies and systems themselves, but the way that they we invest in them and the way that, you know, those things are used. Okay, so it's just about surveillance practices. if we invest in police or we invest in prisons, it's you, about contingent choices that we just casually make, not because of, you know, racist histories. I mean, that's like a straw person way of putting it. You have made the argument that these things become repeated in such a way that they are justified by the same logic, such that they refine upon each historical specific period. Our argument is that instead, it's not that they're just casual, not neutral choices, but there are historical slash specific conting contingent circumstances that make these systems arise rather than just refining upon each yes. other, which we so then form what, is not a form of refinement. Then what are the specific contingent choices that shape and define current day surveillance practices? So I think the Kelly, in, in terms of current day surveillance practices, it's largely based on what you said, right? This uh, carceral uh, continuum what we're saying is that that's predicated off of the way that anti-black surveillance and what, like all those other things are a result of specific systems, uh, i.e. like systems? mass incarceration, uh, the prison industrial complex. These are all things that your evidence cites. Uh, okay, I think so your benchmark evidence is a legal professor yeah, There are about. people in power in legal systems that make decisions that are not neutral, that allow these systems to arise and continue to grow and reinstate so themselves. So why is it such then that these systems are explicitly racialized in an anti-Black fashion over and over and over again? Why is, if it's just about contingent choices, why don't they shift to, you know, different people or yeah, different so the, experiences? The Kelly evidence explains this. It says that obviously shadow slavery was like a huge defining moment in American history and it influenced the way that white supremacy operates in the United States. Obviously, when we change those systems, the, the remnants of the past are going to still be there, but they're changed okay. in you in different ways. So let's talk about Andriotti. You said we need to learn from failure and failure is good. How do we determine when a failure is good or it's bad? Can when there the be negative, bad failures? Uh, in context of our model of debate, no. When we say failure, we mean in terms of like positing an affirmative, having the negative tell us it's bad, and then right. us trying to... Uh, We've made an argument that debaters, when they fail, always refine because they want to win through a model of competition. Bad failures, so to speak, I don't necessarily think good and bad is necessarily the continuum that most describes these, but in your context question, a bad failure would be one in which one fails and does not attempt to use that to improve their action. Okay. For the uh, so then your Mellor's evidence says the problem with how we think about deliberation is we only talk with like-minded others others in that sense what constitutes a like-minded other is it just a di disagreement over a specific thing or does it look more like you know the policy debate more now more than ever only having you know policy uh, people i guess using I read, images of k teams without, i read that you know, piece of evidence mm -hmm. as a justification for a model debate as opposed to like being able to talk about whatever you want and and if we don't rely on the resolution it, there's no check on the affirmative being able to you know use the most wide claims and just defending those things and saying that that's good okay uh the, the like-minded i have one more question agreement for the form rather than the content i have one more question uh you classified as a k are you just going for it as a disad is it a floating pig? Like the alt is political action. What are like, the last actions? the last line? Like literally, like the reformism arguments we're making on case. So I guess reforms. Yeah. What are the alternative? Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. Like what do you what do you defend? We so just like, like an abstract idea of reforming things. The 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 evidence says that we defend 
the idea that these issues are systemic and as a result, they shouldn't be individualized. So we should be supporting on the ground movements uh, that are opposing capitalism. Which Why ones? isn't that AF? That's not the AF because the AF, voting affirmative does not result in those things. It's an individual remedy. Why is that true? The, the, is, like, the way our evidence, the Alvarez evidence distinguishes the political action versus the 1AC, the 1AC is the ruminations on what it means to resist before we come to action and what it means to identify before we come to action and the affect that determines those things. Our argument is, you know, we already kind of know the material stuff that's happening to people on the ground. We know the material fixes to those things. We should align and just push them through before so, we come to debate over our particular political ideologies, such so, as like the example this card gives is like the debates between like Trotskyists and Leninists between communist circles that just become masturbatory intellectual in for one debates second? rather than action. Yeah, can I button for one second? Uh, which specific policies do you defend? Are you like eight can't wait? We need to ban chokeholds. Substantial like, reform to the criminal justice system. That's all. Specific examples. Right. When you give your specific examples of what abolition materially looks like. Okay. Like, then we should only have to defend what the app defends, not anything else. What? Our alternative is an alternative lens for how to view the political. You have specific material instances of abolition. We should not have to defend specific material instances outside so of we'll the ones the F defense. Okay, so we'll find out in the two and see. When we I'll find out what the F is. Perfect. Right. <laughs> and Sounds I good. woo. Okay, so Jacob and Darius, please go to your breakout room. And those students who are watching, you can go to the AF prep room and listen in on to what Darius and Jacob are saying and thinking as they get ready to strategize, Ali and Jacob, if you, or sorry, Ali and Caitlin, so many names. Uh, if you want to go to your prep room and kind of think about the block, you can do that. Um, I'll move Is there you. a way for you to broadcast all the rooms to let us know where to come at? Yeah, I can broadcast much as to all. Jacob, I'll just move you to the app prep room. So yeah, you all do that, and then go ahead and think Squid, you're still here. Jasmine, how do you join the room? and see if it will let us choose a different option. Move to F of Rain.
go where Squid is. It's, it says they're in this room. Oh, there, there it is. No, there we go. Okay. Hi, Squid. Yeah. Uh, we're like, where is Squid? Message to all. Notify me. Squid, can you hear me? Yes. Squid, can you hear me? Yes. All right. So the, the live is streaming this room, correct? One more time. The lot. The, the the. This is being streamed. Like this room. Yes. Okay.
I would be taking notes. Yeah, I just put I just sent Jacob the entire two AC. Some of it maybe sort of uh, deviate from the you know entirety of it because it was yeah, based it's on a big cat blog. Yeah, I know, I know, you, I know. So people should flow. What that sounds like is that people are flowing, not just staring at the block. Yeah. Right? So yeah, it's a whole bunch of stuff that everyone could use. I might not be able to get through all the cap stuff, but it'll be pretty cool. And I send it on the email chain so they can have access to it, even if I don't get through it all. All right, I'm uh, sharing my screen. Good, let's get into it. Got my flows. Hopefully everyone in this chat is flowing. You said AF, TK, Darius. 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 Am I heard? Am I muted? No, we can hear you. Okay, what is, what's the order then if you can't hear me? Um, we can't hear Darius. We can hear you. Yeah, we can. But if you want the order, it will be case framework cap based on okay. the doc. But it seems like Darius has left us. Oh, no, he's no, here. Yeah, we couldn't hear you, Darius. All right, I think I, all right, all right, I'm back. All right, my fault. Uh, yeah, just service issues. All right, cool. Is yeah. everything good now? F, yeah, F, T, critique. Yep, F, T, critique. Perfect. Let's get it. All right, and let me get my timer up. Uh, is the negative team ready? Yep. All right, cool. <clears throat> no black folks, no world, no sky, no heaven. The rupturing of black people's flesh we classify as the transatlantic slave trade not only engenders the loss of the ability to fully express free to gratuitous files imposed upon black waking life throughout the globe, but also posits twice as many the arbitrary algorithm, the independent variable for determining what it means to be a terrorist, deviant, and criminal in the libidinal economy that's brown and specifically our piece of shepherd evidence now. Furthermore, this creates the conditions of the status quo in the criminal justice system, but specifically the hyper incarceration of black folks via books in the data collection, which shouldn't be understood as an accidental or continued event of abusive, of abusive criminal justice reform, but rather as their uh, as their pieces of evidence or their killing pieces of evidence suggest, but rather as a continuous historical principle of a journey that requires the force towards a voting rich porno trip to get internalized black people for white institutions that wants to be eliminated, constrained, and surveilled, which is why their piece of evidence is in the context of why their system is always in response to black folks and the weak and very notion of the region in the first place. It is all based on a continuous process of the historical sort of transatlantic slave trade, which only our arguments specifically, our piece of Benjamin evidence is able to provide a hyper theorization of power about the connectivity between the criminal justice system and anti blacks is the impact and also furthermore to this sort of analysis and sort of not doing the 1AC of the internalization of external systems, aka the voice and double just with wow, sort of orient themselves toward an abolitionist, uh, abolitionist theory. We will provide several examples of what an abolitionist theory looks like. And furthermore, also to furthermore, what the impacts would look like. Several examples such as black people might medically fill in for white institutions where we become police officers, black prosecutors, particularly focus on criminalizing black people in the prison industrial complex. And even furthermore, white people and non-black celebrities deputize themselves to constantly police folks on an everyday basis. That's our beats of Benjamin Rodriguez and Brown evidence. But even in the face of this violent vote, affirmative to endorse the trajectory of counter days in the form of abolition by scripting the script of who gets to gauge via the counter narratives and deconstructive analysis of the 1AC producer. That's why the Brown and the Rodriguez evidence points to the fact that civil society only thinks the conversation is going away, that they are the only ones that have the capacity to ability to gauge that black people don't have the capacity to create moments of counter gaze, but simply put only <laughs> picking up the metaphysical and ontological gesture of abolition via counter gaze as a method of restricting surveillance and focusing the data collection through counter surveillance is able to resolve those claims. I know y'all are still like, what does the app do? Uh, furthermore, they didn't even ask the question of what abolition would look like. So I'm going to provide you examples of what this thing would look like, i.e. in 2017, we were able to kind of surveil the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security that revealed 7,000 pages of documents that contained info about Black Lives Matter activists and other activists being surveilled and considered <laughs> Black identity distributed, which led to legal lawsuits that successfully reiterated government practices and spoke of freedom practices. Now, you should think this is important insofar as it's not a question of macro political changes affecting micro political action, but rather it's the, rather it's the, rather it's the opposite of micro political changes or effective responses from refuse when abolition of practice are able and are a prerequisite and necessary for macro political institutions 
constitution to not only <gasps> sort of reveal or even change their motives, but also to furthermore to destroy <gasps> and reconstruct the very sort of quotidian forms of violence that happened in the first place. Another example of the slave pathologization of braid or the slave fashion pathologization of braid, which led to their ignorance of black people counter gangs and creating braid patterns that signified past the underground railroad or the carving or starting within the slave hole to affirm and remind themselves of their own trending value that the slaves had that thought as their rational, which led to resistance and movements against other <gasps> forms of hegemonic power relations, which is specifically what the Brown evidence and furthermore the Dylan Rodriguez evidence is in the context of the valid <gasps> functions and an endorsement of jamming and restriction to algorithm reach I must develop by returning the right to blackness and understand that blackness isn't a result <gasps> on the one erotic case of the statute quo narratives <gasps> would like to overturn it or say but rather understanding that black people as a body can speak and gauge back to <gasps> speak of freedom practices which were outlined in the Brown piece of evidence go to the case proper they make a piece of web evidence that evades <gasps> their evidence only in the context of that we evade concrete reference our, our 1AC is more than fortune this is the examples <gasps> provided by the solvency advocate they make a piece of shannon evidence this is also in the context <gasps> of that being able to sort of create any political change. All of the arguments that we made from the solvency advocate provide specific example of why the affirmative is able to create material change, but also to furthermore the Dylan evidence makes a claim that only effective responses or orientations are the thing that produce materiality within the first place, which means that we have a unique argument they have conceded. They make a piece of Kelly evidence that was issued about via on the case of review. They make this piece of Austin evidence. The Austin evidence, Austin 1899, S9 is only in the context of why, why the affirmative is A, not accessible. We have provided examples of reason why the affirmative is accessible and furthermore why this orientation is functioning on the ground now but to the last argument of the warrant from the claim is that the one ac doesn't focus upon black women but you should look at the pieces of shepherd and brown evidence as it contextualizes why folks is in the data collection is not only furthermore criminalizes black women but also fetishizes and porno tropes their body to be able to create the sort of coordinates of what it means to be a human within so civil society you can go to the framework page The bait is not just a game, but an extension of the criminal justice system across the across by the top portion of the case over you anti blacks to create the coherent meeting and precondition for the paradigm of policing. This is hyper charged by the due to the mishandling of unique starting the logistic of policing permeate not only the political realm, but also social everyday interaction with black people as begin as people begin to definite themselves and, and make themselves the police or a part of the criminal justice system, i.e. places to space and spaces such as the bait, the streets, the malls, and the schools that endorse the American made make America great again campaign, or even the person that we call as Karen who polices currently or the the, the, the sort of social position of Karen, who constantly polices <gasps> black folks, even when they don't have a badge in the first place, which means that if we win our theorization of anti-blacks and via this digitalization, <gasps> via our Benjamin evidence, you must weigh the case and our data is such at the same sort of procedural level of framework as the one AC was a nine minute impact for normative conceptions or procedures, semantic to surveillance of black people. This isn't just a regular debate, but a debate, but also about debate and the very normative conceptions that we utilize to create orientations and material <gasps> policies in the first place. Now, also, too, counter interpretation, the affirmative provided structural change to the object of the resolution. We have several of benefits. A, she didn't good debate is that an intrinsic good but maintained warrants of villain practice demands black people need non black institutions and centers halfway where the rules are always already skewed to them. The demand for the rule of the negative remains a public concern for the coherency and the face of incoherent of blind thought and should be forfeited in the reversal of the metaphysical strip B of the assault with the advocacy of the one to see B debate on the margins is good. Their groundedness and free brown for only the bill of investment that recuperate liberal humanistic interpretations of blackness as fungible all our piece of brown evidence and even furthermore the Dylan Rodriguez evidence and the Benjamin evidence debate on the margins are necessary to underground normative conception of the coherency that objectify blackness to the black body terms any expertise, impact and policy making, key to political decision making arguments as black studies is the linchpin for producing these conversations in the first place. All out look back to the solvency advocate and furthermore the effective responses of activists that were able to put pressure upon institutions instead of letting white people set the engagement of the game and non-black subjectivity surrender to blackness because otherwise the impacts of the one are and everyone will see productivity just at their description of the non-black uh, of non-topical debate is all that a non-topical debate is only a neutral description of black debate that's not refined enough or not allowed for second or third line sentences is how they pathologize black debate when there's a vibrancy to black disagreement all out their own Kelly evidence just shows the ways in which they're able to provide disagreements and have ground and furthermore they refuse and then rather what they just rather refuse to sort of research that side of the library instead of just reading things such as the Gordon and the Kelly evidence over and over again the impact is psychological violence via double consciousness and limits in normative education play frank black education and black pedagogy and radical education dialogical options for productive education that induces black education as excessive and unproductive which only re re reproduces the impacts of partial reality that the one he has identified the black education that you need to extremely just add behind the belt of limits into neutral <laughs> is that i.e. the neutral revision of targets the belt and the capture of extremes by deputizing the valid as a war. This appears to be proven as framework creation is only a byproduct of the Louisville project being considered by being considered black extremism. The impact is a psychological violence and victim may be the reduction of violence to data points of either for the sake of criminalizing black critical scholarship as the reason for the class of debate and B, this disavowal sentiment what justifies the FBI's warning and books in the data collection upon black <laughs> grassroots movements in the purpose, which means that their reform only reproduces the same <laughs> logic, harsh reality, and criminality that exists in the first place, which means that only the affirmative 
and the form and the content of the affirmative labor resolve the impacts of the framework and also the affirmative but the, the framework of that they have provided their models of it only reproduces and re-reiterates re the same impacts that the one they see and claim now group their last two pieces of evidence group this sort of Andrea and Miller said you should instead refute their entire their agonistic framework of their model or procedural fairness in their favor of antagonistic model that refuses the language of checks and balances in favor of raising the theoretical states of debate itself this compared to all their game framing argument because of the precursors of forms of us subjects that their model debate produces you can go to the cap game and for this piece of evidence, their effective expression and their affirmative is not a move toward resiliency nor communicative capitalism, but toward black hair that operates in the wake of war and 17. We consider the metaphysical injury of laceration of Howard Griffin, what is true of the Lisa Mark at the way that the sign itself is <gasps> a tragic testimony, but what is the sign communicating the laceration because of Howard Griffin, what is the corporate reading and her new enterprise relied on the effective dimensions that translated the ineffable <gasps> variety form of experience for any black place outside the ethic to customary lectures of life and culture, affected to communicate a structure for articulating something with an ethic, the premier form of expressivity, the laceration as a hierarchy of my action transfer <gasps> from one generation to the next, finding various symbolic substitute and efficacy of being that repeat the Initiating moments, but I understand last reason the possibility of communication with least the subject fractured, but I suggest the last rate of precondition communication since the last reason is the restaurant and opening that creates a nexus between inside, outside, self, other, and an individual size community market and community. And we will also provide a just that from you. Oh, we will we, we, permutate you too, but we have better theory of your space in the manner by which capital accumulates. You can look at the piece of Benjamin evidence that classifies the ways in which black flesh is utilized to not only provide data points for the accumulation of capital, but also. I think Darius went out. We'll, Did we lose him? We'll yeah, pause. It sounds like it. We'll pause, like pause there, and then when he comes back, tell him where I think that I stopped him at. Black flesh is used as under the permutation. Do both, y'all. This is the reality of online debate being adaptive and flexible and finding ways to make it work. Darius. He'll get back in when he needs to. Um, let's see. Well, in the interim of when we find Darius, which sounds like the career, my debate career. Oh my God, this is the digital version of where do you find Darius? Welcome everyone. You get to see this digital time. <laughs> He's back. Okay. That was a little petty. I mean, who am I? All right, cool. Can y'all make can y'all hear me? Yeah, you yeah. stop that permutation, do both. Oh, my fault. Uh that's yeah. fine. I'm just letting you know where you ended. Permutation do both. Black folks are you black flesh is used as the Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because that was the time. You were still saying things though. Oh, oh, my fault. sentence. Yeah. Uh, permutation, do both. We have a better theorization of space and the manner by which capital accumulates. Our Benjamin evidence sort of talks about the way in which capitalism utilizes Black folks as data points, not only to sort of mark the coordinates of humanity, but also utilizes Black flesh to sort of accumulate capital. That's really it. All right. You ready for cross X? Yeah. Um, I have a question about topicality. So your counter interpretation says that we should make a structural change that focuses on the object of the resolution, but then under that you make arguments as to why cheating is good. What would that look like under your model debate? Uh, well, I guess our argument is one sort of uh, cheating is, well, it's a refusal of normative conceptions of framework, I think, to simply put. So I think that what would that look like under our model of debate? It would look like debates such as these, but also two furthermore, KBK debates and the debates that happen within the status quo, right? I, I think also, that oh. sort of Dylan Rodriguez evidence because our argument is that these things are happening on the ground now, but also furthermore, Jake would provide a better sort of answer for that kind of interpretation. Of uh, so yeah, your kind of question went on two folds. I think Darius answered the question of, you know, what the counter interpretation looks like. It would require, you know, an abolition or structural change to policing, forensic science, whichever the sections, right? The claim about cheating is a claim about the relationship between fairness, predictability, and particular racialized bodies, right? Yeah, so, so I guess my question is, how do those things operate in your model debate? Like, are like is does your model debate uphold any standards of like procedural fairness? Like when you say that we should focus on structural change about the object of the resolution, can, can teams choose to do other things instead? Or uh, I guess- so. The answer, if I can provide an answer, I think that the sort of 
first thing I think that we assume is that we have a sort of normative or we agree upon the interpretation of what and or a definition of what fairness is within the first place. I think that sort of affirmative is a move toward fairness insofar as we have provided a structural criticism about the nature of debate and your interpretation slash form or your model of debate. Right. And um, I have some questions about uh, some stuff you said on case. So a lot of the analysis that you had was about the importance of an affective response to creating macropolitical change. Can you walk me through how the first results in the latter? Well, I think that one is just, uh, well, I think that you like, so I, I, I can provide an example. You have to think about cutting a tree before you cut the tree. Our argument is that orientations, desires, thoughts, and et cetera, are a prerequisite and produce materiality. I if mean, there are prerequisite, at what point do you like, you know, go towards materiality? Like well, are I, they I always separate the processes? Is, well, no, I think that they're constitutive, which is why the affirmative is making an argument about why it's a question of orientation and reorienting. Okay, so are they are they constitutive I, or prerequisite? They can't be both. Like what do you mean? Like i.e. like I think like you have said that the reason that the affirmative is focused on a theory of abolition instead of concrete materiality is because no, I this that, has no, to come no, first. No, no, no. That's where you have us misunderstood insofar as those things are constitutive. Yeah, the affirmative defends a praxis of actually abolishing prisons and police. Okay, and how do those micropolitical changes spill over to the macropolitical? So I think that the example that I provided upon case was the idea of like in 2017, right, when black identity extremists or whenever the sort of documents were revealed, it began from the sort of praxis of refusal and also a deconstructive praxis of yeah. how. But right. obviously, obviously, the carceral continuum still exists. All of these things right. still exist. How has that resulted in macro political change? Well, like it has put pressure upon institution. It has allowed for black folks to not only sort of right. it revealed to black folks the sort of strategy of the government, but it also furthermore created pressure upon institutions to change the way that only that they surveil black folks. And how did that pressure go? Did I, that wait, do wait, anything? I have a quick question, actually. Um, well, like, why is the AF not just that revealing? Why is it that putting of pressure? Like when I asked in the question of the 1AC, what is the mobilization of the AF? Jacob is just like, it's that moment of counter gazing, which is that revelation of the inability of modernity to account for anti-black violence. Well, our argument is that if the sort of orientation of the affirmative, i.e. countergazing is a trajectory toward abolition, then our argument is that it produces- But there are that. already abolitionists who exist. There's already literature. There are already people oriented. What do yeah, you do that is different? Already, people have already read the class. Already exist too. I think our argument is about- Why are you all the vanguards? Is. Why is debate unique? I guess that's the what question What do you mean? We're I don't think that our argument is that we are the vanguards. I think that you are the vanguards to what our model of debate should be which is ironic that you call it bias debate key to any of that though what what debate key to why well argument is that debate is oh so i think that it's not quote unquote our argument is like debate is uniquely key to mobilizing political strategies our argument is that every single space is particularly important and whenever we get the chance to reorient ourselves to our structures we should which is what the dylan evidence is our dylan evidence is really good in this context and it says that in everyday spaces we should always be reorienting and also constantly thinking about our social position and how we can move further toward abolition our argument furthermore is that in the status quo reformist strategies and reformist orientations over determine the way that imagination functions and that the white mobile subject literally over determines the way that black folks and non-black folks and even white folks orient themselves to the paradigm so i think that like our argument is that not just quote unquote debate per se right our argument is that the sort of analysis of the 1ac and their introduction of this analysis into the debate space is important insofar as we have Nina's argument that says that debate is currently fucked i apologize for like cursing but we have an argument that says that debate is racist we have an argument that says that debate is an extension of partiality so an introduction of the 1ac within this space is uniquely key given that those things are bad So I think it's simple like that. Does anyone have the time? Yeah, I think cross is over. At least on my end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think we're good, yeah. Okay. okay, and on that, I'm going to send folks on over 
to the breakout rooms, i.e. I'm sending kids over to listen to Neg Prep, and yeah. <laughs> Move to... All right, Jacob and Darius, are you going to stay here going to the F room? Oh, it, I, I'm waiting on, I'm just waiting on the option to sort of do it on my phone, but. Oh, okay. Assigned to F room. Yep. Boom. But you know, abolition is in a meaningful sense. We yeah, all be like, yeah. no police, no that shit. Because I think that's where people are probably a little confused. All right, then for sure, for sure, for sure. So the Warren evidence is just making a claim about the way in which affect that only is able to sort of transfer uh, upon generations, but also to furthermore able to mobilize change. I think that all the arguments that I have above are making those claims. So we can you want to write that out onto framework? Yeah, because yeah. I think that's I think the argument because.
my papers for what my flows are. What is the order, Caitlin Laura? It will just be framework with It'll a semi media overview. Hmm. So, All right. you're just going to screw people paper, flow it straight down. What do you want me to do with that? Give me one you know, I would like leave a variety. So I mean, it's like one I'm big paragraph. But I'm looking at it. I don't. That was where I was confused. I'm looking at it and wasn't confused. Heard you separate. Y'all, welcome back to the, the audio version of this live stream. The two and C is about to start. Caitlin, if you guessed it, ha ha ha, it's the name of this entire, you know, stream is going for framework. Who was surprised? That's okay if you were surprised though. <laughs> Those moments. <laughs> is everyone good, calm, collected, and prepared to receive the two and C? Do we have Najara here? Good question. Because it don't look like we got Najara or Kiara. Kiara has not been here. Najara, she's going to go in and out just because of where she is. Okay. Um, so she said that if she messes something, she'll come back, but the live stream means that she'll be able to watch it. Perfect. Do we have everyone else, though? Yeah, I think everyone else is here. Kiara, same thing. Stream. Awesome. Okay. So, cool. when you are good. All right. Uh, is everyone on the app ready? Yep. Perfect. Yeah, we go to you. Hey, Jacob, mute yourself. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll get started. Debate is a competitive research game centered around tournament structure and a topic that was voted on and discussed in the community in advance. We are debating at the beginning of this topic to shape its future for two ways, each of whom has an incentive to craft the most strategic app. The only meaningful constraint on any of this process is topicality. It determines the literature base we are researching and clashing over. It determines controversy, which arguments have the best chance of winning. Under their model, the app fundamentally decides the contours of debate with no concern for negative participation. It's the only only voting negative is the only way to equalize the structural inequities and access deficiencies by forcing teams to debate over a limited balanced controversy we all know exists. Ask your Yourself. How much ground does the negative get under their interpretation? What does it mean to take an agonistic view of the uh, resolution? What kind of links will be granted? Don't rely on the goodwills of two ways. The most strategic aft defends next to nothing, which is what they incentivize. They have demonstrated this by describing the one AC that has no coherence or stasis that should not be negated simply compared to other methods. The revealing of ideology to be compared against other ones before we can actually mobilize it into action. What does it mean to gesture towards abolition? All of the, all the actions and materiality that they have described in the debate is what happens after the counter gazing of the 1AC, not what the counter gazing itself is, which proves that their counter interpretation has no strict model determining what delineates a from negative ground, which means where does that leave the negative and where does it leave the judge to decide what is the burden of negation on this topic, which is how you should contextualize our impact. It is not about Caitlin and Ollie being able to fairly debate. It's about what does it mean for a judge to determine whether or not we have sufficiently negated. Now, here's some top level defense to all of their offense. All we are saying is that you should not burden the negative with having to debate what they have said. It's not that they've done or said anything wrong. It's just an unreasonable bar to set the negative that high, which proves we have not internally deputized ourselves because we're just not trying to kick them out of debate. It's just a question of what does it mean for the negative to engage in AF that refuses to define itself. I mean, the resolution literally says reform is AF ground and abolition is neg ground. Why should we have to go AF every round? It's an unfair. It takes away agency from the negative to craft their own interpretations, which is the point of debating. Now, you can vote negative on presumption. They just read theories of power that have already been published, reflected on in a multitude of times, and just towards and thought about and mobilized for abolitionist practice and they all just all they do is say no to reading a topical plan of debate but somehow all the other rules and norms of debate don't influence this which means you should ask yourself what is unique about this round what is unique about this debate if it's a question we should just practice that ideology every round why not channel that into the materiality that is described by your authors and the people who are influencing your theory which begs the question of why vote for them either competition doesn't matter which means that the AF is valuable but not debatable or competition does matter and the app does not have a material description to compare to the negative which makes it impossible for us to have a fair debate which makes all, all their interpretations go to the line by line we did not drop their uniqueness question it's a question of whether or not they have described a model that justifies and changes the motivations of people in debate or builds off of the motivations people have in debate in order to ensure better education and gestures towards abolition we are the only ones who have described what motivates every decision that goes to debate that's the Mellor's piece of it's in the tournament frame there's an incentive to class and win that requires
requires each negative to be able to negate every wrong, which means the question of every debate, especially topicality, is a question of whether or not we embrace the strategy of engagement or avoidance. Them not caring about policy ground or what we do as debaters is entirely irrelevant to your decision because the question of this debate is whether the negative should be incentivized to engage the content of the 1AC and break out of their comfortable habits or whether they should avoid class and run back to comfort of things like framework, etc. They are correct. No decision, a debate, and no decision in the legal system is neutral, but they are influenced by the context we're in, i.e. the context of debate where we're given a resolution that we're expected to predict that abolition is negative ground, not affirmative ground. Now, you evaluate this with the lens of a tournament with elimination rounds, scoring, exceeding, etc., all of which are inherently impacted by the marginal chance at winning. This means each team has a competitive incentive to minimize clash in order to increase the chances of doing better in a tournament. Our prefer our knowledge of evidence compared to any of their analysis of how debate works because it's a meta-analysis of all literature on tournaments that says this format drives us to be more critical thinkers and advocates in the real world, but requires a commitment to tournament structure and ability for argument forecasting. Policy focus in particular is key because it forces us to make utilitarian calculations, not just questions about why we act, which forces us to think about how our decisions affect people outside of just ourselves and how we relate to the systems of power. Acknowledging opposing arguments and gaps in our knowledge is key to preemptive self-criticism, which helps navigate complex situations in which there's no clear solution like how to make uh, debate more uh, abolitionist. I forgot to change this line. Now, Here's some def defense to their understanding that debate changes our subjectivity. It's not an argument. Subjectivity is not shaped by an individual debate. Sure, balance over time may change those things, but certainly no one debate has that power. This acts as terminal defense to a large portion of the offense they're going for. Second is it's a question of framework is always a question of the process of what's happening in debate, not the thing that influence how we come to understand the resolution, which means you should not hold us to uh, the reasons why the process of deciding the topic is suspect because we do not have our hands over the leverage of power. We only have our hands on how that process is already always already impacted by the way the resolution works, which means able to solve the counter interpretation doesn't need our interpretation. They can see that the enacted reform definitions would both describe that the app has to uh, enact their legislation. They have to change the criminal justice system by passing a policy that reforms some aspect of governmentality that already exists. It cannot abolish it. It cannot get rid of it, which is the distinction for negative ground. The United States federal government has to be the actor, which is important because it determines the most accessible literature base and defines what the negative gets to act in terms of actors, i.e. what defines the counterpoint, etc., which is why I answer the question, the one in one in C cross X, we will not define what materiality of legal systems we do until they have defined what abolition means who in accent, which they which would be more on the case to be in the 1AR. The, uh, the ability for them to I get access to their cheating good arguments because we've internal linked to it, it undermines the ability for competition and the uh, reasons people engage in literature, which means that there's no uh, kind of internalization of abolition, which means that they cannot break out of the repetitive social structures that uh, calcify anti-blackness the way they describe it, which means they have no capacity to mobilize against the very systems that they critique as within debate. Their next argument about the mobilization of ivory tower or mobilization arguments, they a link to this too. They are the same ivory terrorism that uh, cannot be mobilized into the street because there's no way to translate the academia and debate outside of this as well as they allow for the occupation uh, by white debaters over thought because they could just take the one side and lecture of the idea of this is the better antagonism. This is the better way to uh, orient or oneself to the understanding of the topic, which means that they have no way to check or limit those things out, which means that some level of deputization is important. We'll go to that deputization to said now. First, our argument forecasting dis stuff is distinct from it, which is how you should understand our limits argument. It's that every argument is inherently a probabilistic assessment of one's best path to victory and to alter one's win conditions, assuming from the onset that your victory is the only one that can win uh, is a bad statement. In order to engage, you have to be willing to lose and design your 1AC in ways that can be negated, even if there's a high risk that every 2AC has an incentive to hide those flaws. They have to be able to exist in the first place. Only a model of debate that breeds epistemic humility via this, which requires the process of losing and recognizing you don't have all the answers to the world problems is necessary necessary in order to mobilize any of the ideologies that we get out of this activity. They're going to try to no link this office by saying they're not trying to solve all problems or they do not have a totalizing vision of how the world works. However, that's kind of our exact argument is that their moves to gesture and counter gazing in order to rupture these repetitions only plays back into those systems without an ability to change or mobilize uh, the institutions that influence how that ideology is mobilized outside of it, i.e. how do you change the competitive incentives that drives debaters to determine what ideology is important 
important. They breed dogma and decrease the ability for individuals to survive and thrive and debate. Debate in systems of powers may be dying, may be racist institutionally, and may be getting less beneficial, but that doesn't mean we should collapse or accelerate the collapse of those systems because they can be rehabbed or re-geared towards the actual goals that they are able to see. We don't have to win that debate. It's perfectly the ethical or that came out of ethical foundations to win that. It's an activity worth preserving and has some value, which is our Adriati of us. Now, the deputization just had proper. We do not treat debate as already formed or our understanding of the resolution is already formed. It's always evolving. T is a way to constrain it, and it's always already a debate to be had, which is why T has gone against framework debaters, which is our argumentation. And literally, every social organization involves some judgment or on ideal forms and arguments, which means it's impossible to escape contestation or deputization, even in their form of abolition ideology. It be in 16, we, since politics is inherently coercive, we should theorize alternative association where individuals act together spontaneous for the problem with the students explains the statement that politics is essentially coercive with one that politics is coercive. They deny you to suppose that only political elites are vulnerable to critique of disagreement will shape any association of rules needed to contain disagreement. The question who makes rules will apply to all circumstances characterized by collective decision making. This is not just political institution, but family, religious organization will entail some degree of coercion. It's contrary to assume they, they will spontaneously guarantee pursuit of ends free for interference, which means if they don't have any form of limit under their current interpretation or counter model, they uh, allow for the worst form of reactivism from white debate in order in response to abolitionism, such as the defense of things like alt-right politics or white nationalism, which proves that they uh, make debate actively worse. And that should be time. Uh, do you want to keep sharing screen for cross -X? Okay. All right, Darius White. All right, cool. Uh, let me, let me, uh, um, let me time cross six. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. Everyone good? Kaylin, you good? Yeah. All right. Uh, last piece of uh, argument I want to focus on that. You make a claim that we, without a limit, uh, we make debate net worse, I guess. Uh, I guess, could you explain to me why we make debate or why do we allow for, or why does our model of debate justify more white nationalists? If all utterances are equal, if all agonisms or antagonisms to the resolution should be allowed that, and they cannot be limited out because that's a deputization of people in debate, then white nationalists will Why really the their stuff. Why do for any forms of accountability or limits, i.e. whenever we are making the argument that abolition is good, reform is bad? Because you've made the argument that the impetus to enforce limits or a resolution or top understanding of topicality is the same as how white people deputize themselves in response to, uh, no, you know, black I, people protesting or black I people guess, acting. Sure. I guess then I'll go to my next question. You make an argument about sort of how it's a question of changing the criminal justice system. If our argument is that, I, well, my question is, how does your model of debate mobilize itself? I mean, it argues that if we understand, it, this will be broadly the one in R, so uh, if I, uh, yeah, but I would, foreshadowing I, 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 some I, stuff, I, yeah. Uh, but the argument would be that when we understand the like details of how institutions work and kind of how resources are distributed and kind of where they are now, we can, you know, attack those policies, redistribute them, use those institutions to establish Different well, I guess power, who like provided that. that analysis? Where did the negative provide that analysis? Again, I said that's going to be the one in R. Oh, did the yeah. one in C provide that analysis? What do you mean? Where within the one in C did you provide analysis of political institutions about how criminal justice reform is problematic and bad and et cetera? Where within the one in C did you provide that analysis? The that allowed one in C the case the piece of evidence, the pieces of Webb, Sherwin, and, and Kelly evidence. Policy. Right, because you make an argument that that information is key to the mobilization of policy. The Kelly evidence is the only piece of evidence that's in the context I, of the criminal justice reform. I said the Web, the Sherwin, and the Kelly evidence. Oh, they may oh, not okay. specifically outline criminal justice reforms, but oh, they but make the argument, argument about how institutions are good. So you have yes. made a claim about why technical details are good, but you have not provided any technical details specifically about the criminal uh, justice. I think this was hashed out in correct? process of the one and C where when I asked what are the specific no, examples of how abolitionism in, were mobilized, you did not answer. So I was like, no. we will give our specific examples of so how are mobilized so, once we understand how you so are so we can compare. Why doesn't this prove that your model of debate produces reactionary politics via the very cross that we're having? Because, I, I, I mean, 
all politics are yeah. reactionary. My, my <laughs> argument do. is made is that in order to compare nuanced like political mobilizations or whatever, you have to understand what those mobilizations are in the first place and what you're comparing them to. And which should it just be theoretical abstract like comparisons like Trotsky is comparing themselves to Leninists. Otherwise, it's just, you know, intellectual people being like, I have a better lens for understanding the world without understanding the material implications of those things. So again, because you did not describe the material implications in your 1AC or at 1AC cross X, we waited till the 1 and R to describe them so we can respond to it. So those technical details will be hashed out in the next speech. Like I, I like I like that's how policy debate works too. You can't write a counter plan text till you see a policy text. Like it's or till you see a plan text, right? Like all debates reactive. I've never made the argument it's not. Just that those reactions should be shaped by topical constraints. Why is that not the same thing as Joe Biden being like, I can't create a policy to, you know, stop police brutality until after the protests had already happened? Because if you're like, there, everything's fucked. Excuse my language. We should do it. It's just like, okay, well, I agree, but we should, you know, start on like specific things. How do we deal with how, you know, policing is messed up specifically? How do we deal with sentencing messed up specifically, et cetera, et cetera. Like getting rid of a system also requires rebuilding a system or understanding how to get rid of those resources in that system specifically to get rid of how it exactly affects people. You have to understand the specifics before you can understand whether your action is important in those contexts, right? It's not, we do not understand criminal justice reform specifically. It's like, yeah, we have specifics we could compare. It's just, it, none of those comparisons make sense if there's nothing to compare them against. You have not given us something to compare against outside of a theory. It's all I see, I guess. I believe that's time. Um, I can, I can see you talk about it, but I mean, <laughs> no, that just seems kind of, you know, vacuous. That's my point. Oh, okay. Are you bit? We can't make political demands until you tell what, us what your political demands are like. We cannot make comparative ones, is what I said. But can, can you make any? I said comparative. Comparative important. No, come. Okay. Are we good uh, for the one R? Yeah, oh, I sent the. Darius uh, back to. Darius said he's about to join back to here. Uh, Kaylin, can, can you stop it. sharing your screen? Yeah, I just did. All right, sweet. What is that oh. background you have, Kaylin? On my like uh, Google Chrome. Yeah, Another. but I'm and I'm back into action. I heard everything that you said though. It just wouldn't allow for me to talk though. Okay, I just wanted to make we're sure. We're all good. Yeah, yeah, we're all good. Okay. Uh the background of my Google Chrome is like Gengar one. What's the order? Uh, it's case. One question for you. Will you be combining some parts of the K on case? Um Wait, really quick. I guess we'll take prep. Caitlin, did you kick the K? No, I assume you. Okay, then I'll do that. I'll do that. All right. I will <laughs> take the critique and then case. Well, sure. Okay. That's what I was trying to make sure. So I could have my. Yeah, phone. my bad. No, you good. You good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One second. I got a lot of pieces of paper everywhere. Da, 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 da. The cross hex is going to go. Okay. So you're just the critique and then the case? Yes. Okay. okay. All right, anyone not ready? Sweet. Will can see the permutation on the critique. It proves that there's just a test of competition. Any offense on this paper also applies to them because they said that it's compatible with the affirmative. Go on to case. Vote negative on presumption. Countergazing is an abolition. The FS said that it operates as an ontological gesture that can open up the potential for abolitionist praxis. Those are the words of the 1AC, which I actually see FSC prerequisite to the possibility of abolition. Empirics prove that none of the countergazing arguments that they've made that are listed have resulted in abolition, which proves voting affirmative can't combat the structure or nature of the carceral continuum. You should extend the, uh, the, 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 the web there's no absolute. Academic resistance might be effective for small-scale experiences of utopian possibility.
responsibility, but he can't form the basis for resisting violent status quo structures because it's divorced from on the ground movements. Both the 1AC and the 2AC have made it abundantly clear that their carceral continuum is a systemic issue, which means individual remedies like voting affirmative does nothing to take about the book instead of the collection that they critique. Our model debate sells. It starts from the premise that debate is a space for testing the viability of our ability of alternative futures. Their 1AC Benjamin evidence proves it says that, quote, nothing short of the creation of new institutions that lay a claim to space now occupied by the prison and all of its carceral antenna independent just can form the basis of genuine social transformation. It's an active call for new forms of institutions on the basis that status quo technologists are anti-black, not that they will always be anti-black. Debating about the law allows us to capture the intellectual empowered resource that's here to combat systemic discrimination. That's Austin in 89. Suppose you got around under the considering the impacts of law on the less minority weapons, you would have to decide whether you, you will too will portray them as helpless, whether it will flee in the illegal rights, whether women denied amazingly things will limit resources and came out of this case, scathing critiques of the source of their oppression, yet capturing the complexity of their legal status and the translating their the, 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 the concerns to those that the legal scholarly community recognizes being standard realistic other where people are always sitting here. This is time has come for the truly hysterical is to do the truth for sapphires just as far on their own behalf in writing. They complete with freedom to to present the facts to the test of their accuracy and to profess a personal conviction. The minority feels the feminist illegal scholar might be a witness in each of these, uh, these sentences. She must document the material illegal because it's a minority weapon explore the country to concrete problems and many of which are invisible even to minority lawyers because of gender and class differences. Mark the uh, card at differences. If there are, if there are answers to this piece of evidence, uh, it doesn't make sense. It's, in, or, it, it's about how they provide uh, examples of how they result in political change and how effective response are critical to that. This doesn't answer our evidence, which is that institutional change is constituted with those things, which isn't what their advocacy says, because it says that the affirmative is the counter gazing is crucial to the possibility of abolitionists. Like that, that doesn't, the argument doesn't make sense because abolitionists already exist now, which approves all the web evidence. The affect argument, I think they've conceded it. Affect based politics is doomed to fail. Sherwin says that affect relies on a politics of belonging and care, which locks out strategies based off of anger, rage, and frustration. Two implications. One, this is independent offense against the AF. Affect's dismissal of law takes spread to predicate off of anger and rage results in the same violent logic that causes governmental officials to demarcate good black people who peacefully protest from bad black people who loot and destroy property, which proves that they reinstate the white gaze that they've been talking about. Second, their brown evidence says that. To certain acts of cultural production, we can find performance of freedom and suggestions of alternatives to ways of living under a routinized surveillance. That means nothing without a set of concrete proposal, which means the counter gazing of the 1AC is not exportable to the population who need it, which is amplified by the Austin evidence above. The next argument is the Kelly evidence. Black radical tradition negates their understanding of anti blackness. White supremacy structures life now, but it doesn't ontologically define it. The Black Panther Party and Afro American Association prove alternative forms of community building are possible and that their strategy of counter gazing is utilized in the status quo and that it's failing. You should therefore view. The shuttle slavery, James group segregation, and mass incarceration as historically specific and distinct systems as opposed to a reiteration of a cohesive continuation of anti-blackness. That's Kelly. The key distinction here is that anti-blackness has been repeated throughout these systems, but it hasn't stayed fixed and continuously changes, which proves that they are determined by history, which is obviously proven by all of the uh, structural arguments that they've made about the carceral system and how it's predicated off of technology. Technology is the demarcator of our time, which proves that it's historically historically constructed. Afro-pessimism enables anti-blackness by assuming things can't change, political movement change the world even when they feel by alternate green versus Gordon and uh, 17 and anti-black world is not until the world is anti-black such a world is anti-black racist project is not a historical mood it achievement its limitation emerges from a basic life like people thought to continue to fight in the black lives matter the same arguments applies to uh, social death basic premises of the afrocistic arguments are locked into performative contradictions racism is a project that imposing uh, as a model to dealing with people designated black and uh, persons face the problem of a hidden premise of white agency versus uh, black capacity and capacity of person would not a direct response to the theory itself is a form of agency we should uh, avoid the fallacy of confusing social of the outcomes of the goal of afrocism and afrocism is achievement would be as uh, attitude of space black society, society people no longer want to be responsible which is the best way to clear up at least in a short for uh, the forthcoming either responsibility for his value the value whoever is at least a semi put it a point the presumption that i just think it can be known to determine what can be done it's a problem it's such not possible to be it would be about who's reading the events correctly such a trade would be a, prior, a priori prior to events actually unfolding the future unlike language signs and realities however ex post factor whatever is done with it will, will be the, 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 the will be that that one which the future will depend we reject pessimism there's a surveying alternative political commitment appeals to a book commitment to reach us but uh, back to the history and existential situation of its leadership Ancestors, many were like, coming to actions like guarantee or slavery, false to the same, and countless actor other actions for which against the gauntlet of forces that design limited any hopes of a success. Such acts another course for different kinds of struggles. Any Afro business suffers from a failure to understand failures because they're constructive failures. What does initially work transforms condition for something new to emerge? It's an optimistic and individualistic substance. A basis that this model is of a relation, non relational being that it thinks action moves along a course in which it can continue to promote movements. It depends on and not colliding with other alternative models shared by many groups across Africa's relational version of the human being as part of larger system meanings. Mark the card uh, meanings. This all proves that they can't solve any of their 
impacts. They've isolated this internalization of, of, of the white case that obviously can't be solved by the affirmative because of the stuff I said above about how abolitionists exist now, which means that an individual remedy saying vote affirmative doesn't stop that internalization from happening, but having the tools to persuade other people as to why those things are violence is a reason you should prefer our model to be instead. They also can't solve any of the arguments about poor troping or bad tropes that exist on black women because this argument that we made, that piece of evidence that the Austin 89 piece of evidence isn't saying that those things should be talked about, but rather they should be talked about through a legal set, legal lens, which is back to their Benjamin evidence, which is talking about how we need to refactor institutions uh, to support those ends. None of the affirmative does that because it's all about a opening up the potential for abolition, which honestly just misreads the status quo because abolition is talked about now. It's a question about how we translate that to material action. All right, so it's what I agree with. Uh, if you are prepping, you can leave, but everyone else, or you want to go there, you can go. Um, but then uh, the negative, y'all can just stay here. And Squid, you can just stay here. So I'll move people to the AF room. Move to Afrab. Assign to Afrab. Okay. I think that that works. Dana, go. <laughs> There we go. That worked. Is this muted? I never know. I'm like, shit. What is this muted?
Hey, y'all, did y'all know how much print we use? I'm so sorry. No. Squid, you can turn the mic back on, too, as they're coming back. Do we want to just call it on you all? have, like, three left. Yeah, that would, yeah, that that's cool. fine. Or we can just look at, like, how much time we took from the live screen. Maybe that's just, that's too much. Yeah, all right, it's yeah, too I, much. yeah, it's not that serious in my mind. <laughs> all right, we can call it three. Yeah, I think we use about, like, five. Yeah. Okay. The order is going to be case, then the T-shop. Uh, the mic's on. Wait, if I could just take five seconds of prep, Jacob, where are you putting that warrant evidence? Uh, on just the affect debate on case. All right, cool. Five All right, seconds seconds everyone's seconds. here. Everyone so we have is... like Sorry. Yeah, something like that. All right, everyone's here. Jacob, you said the order is what and what? Uh, case, then the T-page. Okay, case... Page. I would love to see everyone's flows at the end of this. You're not seeing mine. I'm not going. I'm not clearly not talking to you. I mean, Jacob, show me your flows. No, um, but for the students, your flows are mandatory. Just to make sure that you weren't just watching this. Be like, oh my god, I live my best life. I hope you're doing that. I'm hoping you're living your best life, Jacob. It's grass. Your <laughs> flow is grass. There's nothing on it anyway. <laughs> Oh, okay. I just typed out All my right. responses. Excellent. All right. Everyone's good? <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Where'd I put my body armor? Drink. Your there body is. armor? Yeah. Oh. Um, like I'll bury. Jacob said, I'm pre- putting my body on the line. You got a pre workout drink for the workout? That one ain't gonna work? This is like some Gatorade. It's like essentially I a Gatorade. I am deceased. This <laughs> okay, electrolytes. Okay, electrolytes. electrolytes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm here no. for it. Debate the sport. Well, We're I've been standing it. this whole time. I don't have a chair in okay. this thing, so I'm just standing. You're not oh. sitting? No, I've been standing this whole time. <laughs> Why do you think I have a virtual say- background on? This is my dresser. I am D. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> we love debate. We love that for Jacob. We love that. We all love it. The order is K and T, as Jacob has said. Yep. Let's get into their life. All right. You should vote affirmative. Abolition is on the rise, and this is our uniqueness argument, not yours. Society and debate are at the crossroads between abolition and reform, and affirming their model debate funnels scholarship and affective energy towards reform. This shifts how you should think about debate solvency level question, especially when they have never once explained what structural reform for the criminal justice system means, looks like, or instantiates. What can they do or say in response? Not once have they given a single example to how to respond to anti black policing beyond specific details are important. It means their argument looks more like banning chokeholds, knowing those solutions only solidify state power. In response, our argument solves two ways. First, First, at the macro political level, abolition is a necessary response to the prison system. The prison and policing system is unquestionably anti black and works to produce blackness as a fungible object for private prisons, proven by the literal exception created in the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment for slavery vis a vis prison and the carceral regime proven by our Benjamin evidence and our Brown evidence. The- and at the micro-political level, uh, counter-casing refuses the desire to police at the level of the individual or the subject. The result of reform is just black prosecutors being tough on crime during election years to appeal to white notions of civility and safety. This is key inevitably to psychic health. That's a logical policy that requires black folk to identify themselves as pathology and engage in mass specific policy responses to their own communities. The web evidence our argument is individualistic. This argument is about motion, which isn't responsive. We call for the abolishment of the current systems as such that new ones can be built and are not contaminated with the anti-black systems of the governance. This is the difference between abolition and reform. Their argument requires institutions institutional tinkering within the framework of the prison that says we can limit the amount of people in the prison, but still relies upon the conceptual category of the prison itself, which can only be rendered meaningful. The jurisprudence evidence that's proven by our abolition argument that abolition is happening now, which proves it's on the horizon, which means countergazing can affirm the affective energy for the affective politics arguments. This is obviously a strong person. There's no coherent explanation of how we lead to pathologizing protests. Our argument, regard, our, our, our argument is regardless of the direction of affect or affect positive or negative. It is the emotion Emotional po- po- potential for politics. Africa is not separate or leaning to politics. It is co constituent itself. Conceding Warren concedes our offense. Warren states that blackened orientations away from institutions not only materialize themselves, but are required to really reconstruct society's norms in the coordinate of humanity, which are utilized to create racialized distinction between criminality and innocence, which means it as the access is structural, both disad to 
uh, uh, reform, but also proves the internal link of our, our abolition arguments. Also, there's no historical example that shows macro political institutions having the capacity to be self reflexive until black resistance, affect, and rage is collectively produced, proven by the current, current protests. Our argument is the Kelly evidence our argument is in a hard ontological claim our arguments that particular manifestations of cars rally change, but the undergirding logics continues, proven by the persist from slavery to sharecropping to prison labor to predictive policing to carceral design. The fact that the police force has literally emerged out of slave patrols, they whitewash the history, which makes their model debate incapable of grabbing criminal justice reform. Our app isn't Afro pessimist, and the homogenization of all black scholarship, as is, is proof of the insular, insular nature of your model debate in your TVAs, which proves you cannot actually engage with black scholarship outside of the realm of fungibility, which is an independent reason to reject their framework, means reject the negative. T. Debate is not the game, it's the train of anti-black conflict. Only affirming debate is antagonistic with the assumptions behind the desire to read framework and the white nationalism are again over and over again. This is our counterinterpretation in the nature of engaging the object of the resolution. This locks in core dissatis, i.e., you get all of policing or prisons good because it requires a structural change at the level of each of the topical arguments, but it questions the need for structural uh structural reform in that context. The competitive incentive arguments is solved by the ground arguments, but over determines competitive incentive at the expense of understanding the intramural relationships that happen inside. Of debate rounds, we're going for two offensive arguments that outweigh any questions of competitive incentive because they relate to the way in which communities come together and define, etc. But also the semantic way in which competitive incentive gets weaponized in an anti black fashion. First is the productivity decide they can only understand black debate or uh, non white debate in the context of describing them as lazy or worse debate or messy debate or description, which proven by all their internal link arguments about the lack of description or all of their external arguments. This is impacted out by the black identity extremist arguments. The fact that they criminalize the affirmative for other affirmatives that are not our affirmative, that are weaselly or small, proves all the criminalization arguments because black debate is always getting framed as the gateway drug to all the worsting potential things in the world. They've ignored the way in which framework is constructed in response to the Louisville project as a way of applying cultural mechanisms, i.e. the logic of punishment that says you can only re-enter society or re-enter debate insofar as you appeal to white norms of respectability or white norms of reform, which crowds out the potential, but also is the internal link to our mimeticism argument that's on case that the fact that the black debaters are forced to meet in the middle and be reform half the time, be abolition half the time, is what allows that mimetic construction towards prosecution, cops, etc. at the individual level. They've also, on the large, conceded the debating on the margins argument, the cheating arguments argument says they, they limit debate to meet the, the they meet they make black people meet civil society halfway, proven by the fact they said abolition is native ground. This is our micropolitics argument that says there needs to be ability for black people to redefine a fairness limits or predictability in this context at the indication that these debates are necessary, which indicates all the deputization argument because framework creates that repetitive association with blackness, with criminality, which proves the affirmative moment of counter gazing is necessary to shift it out of the arguments. We say affect and material politics are organizing, which enters their arguments about change. Andriotti links to themselves. There desire to constantly with framework is the desire to not fail in negating in the affirmative. They are the engagement with like-minded people over and over and over again that says like-minded is about difference in agreement, which at its most heart level retreats back into diversity is about diversity of ideas, not about diversity of relationships to power or diversity at the level of structural racism. They say abolition is negative ground. That only locks only locks abolition into reactivity, which allows people like Joe Biden to siphon the energy of these protests, calling for abolition into reform by only understanding and reactivity. They say debate doesn't show the state subjectivity. There is answered by our war evidence that describes the importance of affect, etc. The depictions are formed. They don't describe a definition of criminal justice reform, which means they don't solve their own grab ground arguments. Abolition should be a new ground. It's, under, it's necessary to understand it's generative. The, all arguments require disagreement obscures the racialized nature of how they disagree. And that's time. All right. I'm going to let the negative go into the prep room. Get your 2 and R thought through and out. I'm going to send the kids with y'all as well. Ooh, sorry, Squid, ignore that. Ignore that, please. Don't go.
Thank you. Let me know, like, uh, like a thumb or something once I'm muted. You're good. Go ahead. Hello to everyone who's watching the stream. Um, as you can see, we've been toying around even as we've started this with how online Zoom rooms work, doesn't work, and how the streaming capability of those things uh, kind of operates with it. So taking a lot of good notes on uh, what has been successful and not uh, for us, and we'll readily share that information um, for those who you know want to know real time kind of the experience of doing these things. But the reason why all you see is my face right now, and why I came back so that you like you know you hear something happening on the stream, is because the students who have registered for our Q and A as well as are part of our sessions are listening in on to the prep and strategy portion of the 2NR, 2AR, 1AR, 2AC, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The utility and purpose of this practice is that it allows for um, the you know, observer, students, audience to kind of see the strategy making process in real time and not just like from a lecturer, we are the adults, we know what we're talking about perspective, but as debating our peers, how we are thinking through and moving through the debate in kind of real time, trying to figure out how to, you know, work our arguments, work how we're engaging um, the debate. It allows for students to one, see that we are people who used to be really in, um, you know, in this activity as debaters um, or, are, or are, were once high school debaters and now college debaters and letting them see that we make mistakes, we learn how to innovate and get nuanced, and they get to see via what's on their flows and what's happening in the round and hearing um, the session leads really kind of interact and see how those things get troubleshooting worked out, which I think is pedagogically valuable. And so, um, like anything else, I, I am, you know, founder and CEO of Debate Boutique. If you have any questions or are interested in our July session, where this will be a continued practice. It's a continued practice in all the things that we do. Please, you know, send me a DM, a question. I would love to talk uh, to you. We will also have other uh, pro debates that happen throughout the summer. Uh, one that's coming up on Wednesday with myself in it. Oh, good Lord. Um, and others throughout the summer. So if you are interested in just the uh, pro demo debates and joining in on those chats and conversation and strategy rooms that are happening during these times and the Q&A that follows, please, please, please also reach out, register, ask me about dates, and I will let you know. I think that everyone is here except for, oh, there's Darius. Um, letting him hit in now. I'm going to stop talking, but thank you all so much for watching the stream. We are super, super stoked. Um, at those who have been really kind of committed for the entirety of this and hopefully that it is, you know, valuable to those who are about to engage on this topic in their high school year and, you know, their high school years, whatever year you're in, um, for what your debates might look like or what they can strive to look like at some point. And with that being said, I believe we have a 2 and R to listen to from the Caitlin Walrath. Um, is everyone good to go? Jer Darius and Jacob, are y'all good? Are y'all plugged in? Yes, yes, we are. Perfect. So, Caitlin, let us, I'll let you take the lead on this. Perfect. Thank you, Jasmine. Uh, so, the order is going to be case and then framework. Is everyone good? Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. I assume Jacob is here, just silent. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, let me get my Word docs. Just random notes up. Okay. Everyone good? The office conceded you vote negative on presumption. The 1EC says that, that it is just an ontological gesture that can open up potential for abolition in practice. Yet their 1EC Benjamin evidence proves the burden for voting AF is that they have to present a vision that is, quote, nothing short of the creation of new institutions that lay claim to space that has now occupied the prison, end quote, and all of its cultural and tenai and appendages can form the basis of genuine social transformation. And, quote, part two, our evidence indicates that or our debate proves the closest they've come to this is describing why, how they create the mindset for abolitionist practice but not 
accurate description of how they create those new institutions or how they redistribute those resources or when and sure what evidence are all indicate that their affectable basis for their politics are ineffective at actually ever getting to those questions or creating the uh the is for discussion of the nuances of what it means to engage in institutions, especially because of them having such a pessimistic orientation towards the idea that we can even retool or tinker within the system to retool those resources in the first place, which proves that they do not do anything that is not happening in the status quo, which begs the question, what is unique about this debate? The 1A argument just says that abolition happening now is unique for them, and the 2AC's argument is that we should just practice abolitionism at, in in all instances, but what does that actually mean in terms of materializing them or when it sure went in Austin that it's all problematized and it indicate when you do not uh, mobilize the ideology that you have it just leads to infighting amongst in in different individuals about the very slight nuances of their ideology, which means it paralyzes action before it can ever be mobilized into uh, actually affecting the material conditions that uh, hurt people which proves that they are just caught up in the same redistribution redistributions or repetitions of technologies of anti-blackness that reproduce the violent re orientations that they understood our evidence indicates that only our model of debate that focuses on record that focuses on the political uh, nuances and how we engage these institutions and uh, resolve these things is able to solve our Austin evidence is the examples that are given even all he didn't explain them in the one and our specifically indicates that black women specifically use their voices within legal systems to are to mobilize different resources to create different law firms towards things like bail challenges etc that are and sentences at a material level that is able to solve their impacts. You can think of that as a functional topical version of the act that they do not get access to and actively trade off with because they say that those actions are not effective because they do not just create abolitionist practices, which proves that they trade off with it. Now go to topicality proper, which proves that any shifting outside of that and all the examples I've proved that they've shifted away from just being a gesture towards abolitionist and stuff proves that they link to all of our argument forecasting arguments. Debate is a competitive research game centered around tournament structure with competitive incentives shaped by a topic that has been voted on and discussed in advance. The only meaningful constraint on any of this process for negative debaters or debaters in general to access is the process of topicality debating within round predictable literature bases should be the lens through which we, you and metric which you compare our competing models and counter interpretations with the 1AR has zero description of how they write a predictable literature base consistent for the negative to interpret but it means what they will be refuting only our interpretations able to solve which proves that they do not have the capacity to change how debaters engage with the content they're forwarded i.e. if they are right the debate is caught up within these technical processes of reproducing anti-blackness then they have to forward a model that's able to prevent that from just happening instead of just resisting it our interpretation is able to solve it because retooling the interpretation of the specific resolution towards the idea that enact and reform being tinkering within the state does not does not de-radicalize the content within that i.e. we can understand that the criminal legal system needs to have massive challenges and redistributions of resources away from it i.e. doing things like redistribution the 500 billion dollars that goes towards policing towards housing etc which are all reformist ideas but our argument is we have to understand those institutions and the powers that come to them beforehand in order to understand how to mobilize it that's only possible under our interpretation of enacted reform which they do not have their counter interpretation makes this impossible because it just requires one debater to have an orientation towards the topic and refuse to deputize or limit out any uh, other sort of considerations that's the only way they can solve any of their offense about black extremism and identification the DAs that they've done on the case, which proves that there's a disconnect between their offense and counter interpretation. Our, and we don't link to any of their offense anyway. Our uh, if the evidence that's on that was read in the 2NC indicates that every social construction, literally every instance of organization that you have, will always place a limit on the content you have, which is not a deputization, but is a request for understanding what are the most effective solutions for mobilizing the resources and things we have in front of us, which proves only our topic that is able to effectively limit the conversation conversation under how do we create comparisons between different methods is able to solve restricting that to the agent of the United States federal government is the most effective way even if it is ethically dubious because there is the most literature available about it that is accessible on both sides which is able to solve a large portion of their offense I'll do the argument forecasting stuff now which is our offense that should be weighed against them absent a limited constraint on the topic there's no ability for the negative to predict what it means uh, to effectively rejoin the negative or what it means to point out the flaws in the 1AC or what does it mean to prove out that the 1AC is not an effective action which is not only 
be unfair for the debaters themselves because it means they do not cannot craft strategy, but it makes it impossible for judges to fairly judge debates in the first place, which undermines the competitive nature in debate because no one will want to win or participate if they think judges already have a pre-rigged conception of win conditions, which only our model is able to keep people in in the first place because the only way win conditions can be artificially altered by the process of debating is in the negotiation in the round because everyone still has access to the same literature basis, etc., which is where unique expression of skill and stuff happens, which solves all of their innovation and content expression arguments, but uh, still preserves our limited model, which is necessary to uh, create engagement, uh, which is the only way to get education on the topic in the first place. Oh, subjectivity arguments, they can see that there's no impact to them because no individual debate round can shape. All right, so time for prep for the 2AR. Getting ready to respond to that 2NR. Have fun. I'm not waiting.
we're missing. One. All right, we're back. One sec. I'm seeing who we're missing. Who do we? Who do we? Lisa's leave? not a here. I don't know who it is, but Lisa's not here. Yeah, Lisa's not. Let me mess. Let me just make sure that's on purpose. It could be. Hi, stream. There he is. You want to plug where you're from for the one time, one time okay. while we're waiting. The Louisiana shout out to the three one eight. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what about shout the out 337? to three three seven. Yeah, in the three three seven. That's where I'm currently at. Shout out to the people that are currently on the ground. Shout out to the people that are part of forty five days of action. They are an organization within Louisiana that is trying to do their best. Shout out to Speak Up. It's also an organization that I'm a part of specifically. Uh, they are also yeah. We're speaking out, speaking up, and doing things. Yeah, against uh. Yeah, police brutality. And furthermore, we're focusing not only just on black men, as a lot of majority of movements are, but we're also focusing on like, yeah, black people and other black identities writ large. So and yeah, so like, yeah, y'all should definitely check out the movement. It's pretty dope. It's pretty cool. Uh, Yeah, so it's pretty fire. We have a Facebook page. If you want to check it out, it's pretty fire. Uh, and there are multiple organizations that are not only in within Louisiana that are sort of going, yeah, that are challenging the sort of hegemonic structures that exists currently within this, you know, civil society and the status quo. But yeah, there are other things that are just, you know, out there as well. So I just want to say, not only just give a shout out to my city and where I'm from and et cetera, but I just want to give out a shout out to the people that are currently on the ground and sort of helping us just even have the capacity to breathe and just, yeah, just putting their bodies on the line constantly every day. So if you do have the capacity to donate to those organizations and those people that are currently just laying the groundwork for us and providing us a blueprint for what these debates should look like, and even providing us the sort of material evidence, the experiences, the sort of all of the stuff that's going on within this debate, I would suggest everyone to do so because those things are definitely important and why these debates matter. So, yeah, that's what I'd say. Retweet. It's a good way to, to start the top level framing of the 2AR. No, I didn't mean to do that like that. Like I was just no, I re- no, no. <laughs> I'm really making like a petty indict of what folks said about me. It's like okay, gave the the two the one AR like the gave the speech before the speech. It's like I said hello. I'll, yeah. I'll endorse it, so it's no two A bias. It's not half right. bias. We endorse the message that is if you have the resources and the time to donate towards activist organizations that are for the abolishing of the carceral state do so. That is a message brought to you by Debate Boutique. And on that note... (laughs) Yeah, 2 AR. Is everybody here? Is Lisa here? We got all the folks that's necessary and stuff like that. We good? Jasmine? All right. uh, Caitlin and Ollie, are y'all good? Jacob? All right, cool. All right, then, well, then if there are no objections, the order will be case and T. Oh, let me get my, uh, uh, now, uh, let me see. I need a timer. Cause like, uh, oh, I need, I need a timer. I just want to put a timer up because every single time I put a timer on my phone or yeah, it just kind of sort of makes some of the sound crash and et cetera. So I just want to make sure I got a timer up. Heard you. I'm getting on Google now. I can hear it. I know. I'm trying to like wait for it to load. I got this new laptop. This laptop is trash, though. All right. Yeah, I just put on the top thing. All right. Is everybody ready? Cool. All right. Starting now. Their only push on case arguments is just a presumption claim, but conceding all of the arguments about the mimesis arguments, only hypercharges are solved with having it and why the accumulation of abolitionist theory and building upon that analysis upon the groundwork now is necessary to de-internalize the very trope that overdetermined black imagination and the capacity for change within the first place, which is why the app is necessary to not only build upon the intergenerational kinship, which is the argument, the specific piece of born evidence that goes cold considered throughout the entire debate, why the building upon black affect 
life and the transferring of those signs are necessary to create change, but also to furthermore, it solves a large majority of their argument and it also focuses upon the legal nuances and only the affirmative provides a hyper-specific analysis of how the carcerality logic not only affects the sort of processes of black folks currently, but also furthermore now has abated into the process of digitalizing sort of data, uh, digitalizing sort of black flesh to function as data points for criminality to mark the coordinates of humanity, which were all considered arguments and resolves a large majority of their technical nuanced arguments that they're going for on the case phase vote affirmative to endorse a trajectory of counter gains in the form of abolition by flipping the script of who gets to gauge and also the via the counter narratives and deconstruct analysis of the 1AC, which goes cold conceded why the 1AC is a living, breathing artifact that is necessary to change not only the nature of people within the realm, but also educate youth and further those tactics and to allow for an abolition practice, which is necessary to be street construct civil society, but also reconstruct and reorient ourselves toward moments of resistance to conceded examples that go, that were pushed throughout the 2AC, but also furthermore throughout the 1AR, the 2007 activists able to counter surveil the FBI and Department of Homeland Security that revealed 7,000 pages of documents that contained the FO about Black Lives Matter activists being surveilled and considered Black identity use criminals, which led to legal suits that successfully reoriented government practices and spoke of freedom practices. Dragon provides a uniqueness argument that goes, Cole conceded, the government is a do shit only when Black folks produce the effective change and response to put pressure upon political institutions, which means that all of the arguments Arguments about why the app is a prerequisite and why the aspect of the affirmative is necessary for micro political change goes go conceded and hypercharges all of our arguments for why a vote for a vote affirmative and a ballot for the affirmative is necessary for any of the topical versions of affirmative in the first place. I'll answer the last argument about Judah Prince and the reproduction of anti black is only the affirmative is able to resolve, but by main means, this argument means that there only we have a risk of resolving all of the impacts on the reproduction of those play prisons and police are terminally bad and are terminally messed up now, which is a cold conceded argument, which means that only at best a orient toward abolition is necessary or otherwise it only reproduces the same psychological violence which is all of the arguments when they were conceded on the framework flow proper and lastly the argument that they make there's no new they're making claims about why limits and procedures are good but then go for a QNR TBA which means that there should be a high level of skepticism that will resolve that, 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 that there should be a high level of skepticism against any of their nature of their claims about limit procedural fairness we're not, we're not able to predict not only the sort of technical issues of what the fuck the TBA is what does it do what does it look like all of their arguments are not do not provide technical issues that mobilize themselves and even furthermore they have made a defensive argument that individual debates and their model of debate furthermore does not produce change which means that only a process or having an affirmative without a telos is necessary to resolve any of those claims lastly judah prince no it's not an engagement with the state but an engagement against the state which is all of our arguments about why an orientation to abolition is net better and also furthermore is able to resolve any other claims under the framework phase they make an argument that debate is a game and that judges do not have predetermined bias or otherwise that no one would debate. But have you seen the paradigm page and tab room in the debate? Wiki, all of those arguments are already here. White nationalists are here. Debaters have predetermined notions of what framework should be, which is all of the arguments that we have on the libidinal economy. Fold. They are not going for the argument or the Kelly evidence about contingency. But furthermore, even if they do, only we are controlling the argument about how contingency is rooted upon an anti-black structure or the idea that a state, the nation state and civil society is weak, which is why they're reactive toward black folks and why those policies from Jim Crow to started from slavery to Jim Crow to New York segregation to poor, poor private prisons all follow along the line of trajectory of anti-blackness, which means that if we are winning any of our claims about how their framework only reproduces this model of debate, then this is problematic and bad. Furthermore, we have a dissent to the, all of their agonistic model debate, which is what they're Kelly, which is what they're Kelly, they're, they're Mellon, and also furthermore, their Andonati evidence is in the context that people quantify our antagonistic framework, which is what Jacob is doing at the top of the debate. Space and also, furthermore, solve all of your office. We will classify this here. Counter model debate resolve their office. Our argument is that the affirmative is allowed to take an antagonistic position. And this isn't that every instance of reform is anti black and the negative must contest that position. Multiple reasons that solves the net better a predictability and negative is used by with research over the summer, like the why the stage is good, successful, well, successful movements, etc. Reasons why reform is better has to be adjusted, such as institution. This isn't conceded ground, but core that ground up. They said B limits the affirmative is able to take an absolute substantial resolution in relation to the resolution, even if we effectively win. We think it's just part of absolutism and absolute. Abolition. This makes it easier to be negative because we can't shift because we're pure abolition. But also, too, furthermore, the stage's point, we are making arguments about debating whether or not we should shift, engage in institutions in the context of criminal justice. It's not only a clear stage's point that is particular, more timely than I imagine it. Be a policy because answering that question, the age of black mobilization against criminal justice, because all more important, all the arguments of psychological violence is important. Now, you should not just understand that the counter interpretation. This is a counter model of debate on the counter interpretation that you should understand the affirmative as changing the sort of object of the resolution, the affirmative is interaction or the directory of 
the topic into forest it, it abolishes the very sort of nature of the criminal justice conflict, which means it also is quote unquote affirmed <gasps> affirmative as well. But also furthermore, they have a disag they are conceded antagonism is good agonism, <gasps> softening political demands, and also furthermore, in the equivalent of seeing and inviting the Nazi to, to, to debate the question of uh, well, whether or not <gasps> black people are people in the further disallows for fascism, enters to the field and turns all their dogmatism arguments, which means that only the affirmative is necessary to allow or to move away from echo chamber and to allow the current iterative process in the first place, which means that, yes, they have not answered the arguments about how they only reproduce the logic of black identity extremists and the carceral logic, which means that if it's a question of predictability and ethicality, we will win that ethicality outweighs predictability, which were all the conceded arguments above. And furthermore, we access the internal link. I think that's time. All right. Awesome. Um, this has been an excellent, excellent, excellent uh, debate, and I'm so appreciative for everyone who was participant in it, including Ollie, who had to leave out because um, of prior commitment. So I just wanted to say thank you to them, um, you know, openly and publicly on the stream, as well as thank you to uh, Darius White, who gave a excellent guest lecture earlier in the week for our session students and those who registered in, um, you know, putting in the work for the kids, um, you know, really, really appreciative. And then showing them how to apply it in um, a competition setting is amazing. And, you know, honoring that work as well as while you're in, you know, your home state and doing and uh, working with activists and, you know, on the ground, kind of mobilizing a lot of the politics that we talk about in debate and it's a lot. And so I thank you for carving out some time to give to Debate Boutique for this um, moment. Um, and then also to Caitlin and Jacob for, you know, they are session staff with Debate Boutique. So it's not like, you know, we turn on and turn off and, you know, do not kind of put in the labor uh, with our students, we're willing to throw our hats back in, you know, after talking to them all day long to be like, hey, let's show you how to do this thing called debate. And so I'm really appreciative for them, you know, one, taking the hat off and getting back in the ring for, you know, a series of debates and then also, you know, putting on, not just like doing it. So I'm really, really appreciative to everyone who was part of the debate, all of our students who watched the debate and to everyone who is watching the stream now and who will watch the stream later on. We think that it's important to make debate as accessible as possible, but also to create that kind of very um, specialized and personal experience for students as we enter into the digital space. And that is something that is very difficult to do, and we are learning every single day as that happens, uh, being one of the first kind of like services to go online and to hold, a, you know, multiple week long program. And so if you like anything or see, you know, the work that we are doing and you want to take, you know, a leap of faith and work with us this summer, please consider working with us for our July session or coming in for more of our demo debates in our August session, which is a little bit more unique is our boutique burner, which will be talking to you about once you've gone to camp and you have those apps and ideas and you have those neg ideas and you want to play them out in debate, you want to talk to people who can really critique and challenge your arguments. Come with and join us for that week-long experience, um, August, I believe it's 10th through the 17th. I could be wrong about the specifics of those dates, but I think that's pretty accurate. So that's all I'm gonna say, unless Caitlin or Jacob or Darius have any kind of last uh, statements before we end the live stream and then just go into our q and I just wanted to say, Thank you. And to let y'all know that we're really putting in a lot of work to do something meaningful with the students who put that faith in us to work with them. The only two thoughts off the top of my mind was if anyone is in Tulsa or around Tulsa, I would say support both Still She Rises, who worked to create an expert panel earlier in the week, but also support Unify Tulsa, a organization emerging now working to fight for prison abolition, police abolition, and many other things on the ground in Tulsa currently. Subscribe to Debate Boutique. <laughs> Get notifications for when other cool, honestly, like amazing group of intelligent individuals come together and 
give them time to you. You want to be notified when that happens. We appreciate that, Squid. And Squid, I don't even know why I didn't say thank you to Squid. Sorry, Caitlin, to cut you off. But like, uh, yeah, a, a big one. Thank you, Squid. But then also a big, big shout out to Squid, who, you know, heads Exodus Files. For those of you who did not know that, um, you should. Now you do. If I've said it, Squid helps operate slash operate Exodus Files. So all those debates that you watch on YouTube and you're like, whoa, where did they come from? How did they get such clear audio? That is courtesy of Squid and um, Turek. I'm probably saying their name all the way incorrect. I apologize if I am. I, I suck at names. Care, no um, you're right. Thank you. Um, but they're also being so um, helpful and to us being K. help stream our content to help us bring a broader network and community. So we're super duper appreciative of that. So thanks, Squid. Yes. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us and helping. And thank you, Jasmine, for rounding us out with, you know, your words and guidance kind of for how to like understand and kind of process this debate for our students and, you know, our observers as well. Um, I guess the thing I'd just say is just like, Everyone should remember, you know, we're debaters and we have the ability to persuade and communicate and like, you know, take our ideas into real life. So if you have people in your family who like aren't, you know, aware of what's going on and like kind of the conversations we had, like take the time and have down the conversation and educate those people around you. Use the links, use the research you do in these debates to have the difficult conversations, especially surrounding race and whatnot and uh and its relations with the criminal justice system but like kind of in the broader context of it just existing as well and don't be scared of them you're a debater you're trained for this excellent and on that we're gonna end the stream oh and black lives matter oops yes. okay end stream <laughs>